It's Friday night football in Birmingham. I'm just going to take hard work and dedication. The game plan is just, you know, trust the coaches. A losing season now turns into a winning one for the Woodlawn Colonels. Can they keep the winning streak going? We're still in the hunt for the playoffs. Plus, out with the old and in with the new. Woodlawn has a new on-campus stadium, and it's getting attention from former football players. I wish we'd have had this baby about 25, 30 years ago. The pregame show starts right now. Live from Birmingham City School, you're watching DCS Honor the Light, the pregame show. Woodlawn High School Band. Good evening, everyone. I'm Brett Oates. Steve Brown has the night off. Now to the big story. Woodlawn High School student athletes now have a new on-campus stadium. There was a ribbon-cutting ceremony for the new stadium back in August. It will seat nearly 3,000 people. The stadium has new synthetic turf and an alternating stripes for the light gold and dark green every five yards. 
There's also a new state-of-the-art weight and film room. Join us now, live, is the Birmingham City School Superintendent, Mark Sullivan, who is also a Woodlawn alum. Dr. Sullivan, tell us about the big deal that is going on here in the Woodlawn community. So let me first correct you, that is not uh, a, a dark green, that is forest green. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm <laughs> well, Woodlawn kernels and that's old gold. Okay. So, so uh, yeah, it, this is a really big deal. I, I remember as a student, I played on that location back there. I can't say on that field, but on that location as uh, a 10th grader, 9th grader playing B team and freshman football at Woodlawn High School. And it's just amazing to see that we have these facilities right here on campus. You know, in Birmingham City Schools, we say success stars here, but it also starts with the facilities that we put in place for our students. And I think this is a first class facility for the students of Bur Birmingham, High S Birmingham City Schools and Woodlawn High School in particular. Yeah, what do you think about the facility? What does it do for the, I guess, emotionally for the community as well? Well, you know, I, I talked to Cheryl when we were, talk we were putting the schedule for BCS under the lights this year. And I told her, you know, one of the things that we wanted to do was wanted to make sure that we went to the Woodlawn Colonels uh, field. And I'm excited to be here this morning, I mean, this afternoon, this evening. Mm -hmm. And I think it really just built a sense of community over here. I mean, Woodlawn is a, is a booming community. There are a lot of businesses coming to the community, a lot of people moving into this area. And I think this is like the cornerstone of that. And, I, and you know, I'm wearing my, my big W. Okay. And so thank you guys for coming to the castle on First Avenue. Well, we appreciate it. Your winter green. Yeah. Uh, Forest Green. Forest Green. <laughs> there we go. All right. Well, Dr. Sullivan, thanks so much for coming out again with us. Well, absolutely. All right. Now, this new stadium has caught the attention of former Woodlawn players. Fred Davenport introduces us to two who wish they had these new amenities back in the old days. Two former Woodlawn High School football legends. This is a great field, man. This is real nice. Oh, I love it. I love it. Cedric Blair and Wayman Benefield returned to their alma mater this week to check out the school's brand new stadium. But I like what I see. Something that we can be proud of. You know, I wish we'd have had this maybe about 25, 30 years ago, but we don't. We didn't have this here at Woodlawn. Blair and Benefield played on the same football team at Woodlawn in the 70s. Benefield was a quarterback, and Blair was an offensive lineman. This used to be the practice field, our football field. It was a field here, plus the bleacher was over here. It was higher, and I remember we had to run up and down those stadiums. It was tough. It prepared you to, uh, to go out there and play. This photo shows Woodlawn's football team standing on the school's old field in the 30s. Woodlawn's football games weren't played on campus during Blair and Benefield's era, they played their games either at Lawson Field or the historic Legion Field. It's important to mention, Woodlawn has produced some top-tier athletes during its 107-year history. Dr. Greg Carr, Jerry McConaughey, he went to play with the uh, Raiders. Tony Nathan, Howard Ross, I mean, I can just go on Greg Carr, that was just... Uh, and then after us, Dansby, Chris Davis. The late Florida State head football coach, Bobby Bowden, also a former Woodlawn football standout. Meanwhile, both Blair and Benefield hope current players take pride in the new investments and the community continues to support the Colonels. I'm Fred Davenport with BCS Media. Let's get into tonight's game. The Colonels are coming off a very close win against Jackson Olin last week. Tonight, they will face the Gardendale Rockets on the gridiron. The Colonels have been working hard this week to get ready to secure their second win of the season. Right now, the Colonels are one and three in their 6A region. The Rockets are two and two. Zach Sims continues our coverage. We're here at Woodline, home of the Colonels, with our Mikhail Jackson. And if you will, tell us, uh, tell us what it's gonna take to turn it around this week. Uh, it's just going to take hard work and dedication, just coming out, uh, believing in the coaches, believing in the game plan, and just believing in each other. Okay, you're coming off a big win uh, against Jackson Nolan. Um, how much do you know about this Gardendale team? Um, I know they're a uh, pretty passing team. I know they like to run the ball. You know, they like to spread the defense out and things like that. They have a pretty good quarterback. He can throw the ball. He can also run, too. So uh, if we contain him, we'll pretty much contain the game. Okay, you talk about uh, you're coming off a win over Jackson Nolan. Correct. How much of an impact has that made on your kids? Oh, man, they, I mean, the spirits are, are high. You know, it, it always feels good to get a win. But uh, the first win, and, uh, myself as a head coach, um, 
kids, I, I totally bought in now. And um, we're just gonna use that as motivation, as a driving force to keep us um, going forward in the right direction. Now, to our commentators for tonight, sports analyst Michael Tart and Keith Mims. Hey guys, what should Woodlawn focus on tonight to earn another win? Well, I think they've got to throw the football around tonight. Uh, Brett, uh, they did a great job on last week. Cornelius Hudson returned as their quarterback. He's got two great receivers uh, that he's throwing the football to. They put up a lot of points last week, mm. 36 points, uh, 38 points against Jackson Olin. I think they've got to come out and uh, show that same kind of offensive initiative tonight. In effect, this is a playoff game for Woodlawn yep, yep. because if they win out, they're in the playoffs. If they lose tonight, the season is effectively over. Okay, Michael, what do you think, man? What do you got? I think Woodlawn has to play a strong defense. And you got a Gardendale's team that's put up over 45 points in their last two games, and that's been the last two wins they had in the season. So defense is key for them, and they're just going to have to stop them. That's the way they're going to beat Gardendale tonight. Okay, well, tonight we also have a special guest with us down here, former quarterback, as you told me, like Wayman Tisdale. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Set my games a little better. There you go. <laughs> Tell us what you're going to think. What are you going to go do tonight? What do you well, think? your guys need to do to get that number two? I, I think they, uh, first of all, they need to limit the turnovers. And I think that's always a, a big part of the game. And if we play tough defense, we'll be in the game. But, mm -hmm. but if we don't have turnovers, uh, you don't beat yourself, you pretty much can stay in the game. So. Now, last time we saw <laughs> Gardendale, we saw the Gardendale, they do have some running backs that can get outside. What is it that the defense has to do, must do tonight, to shut that down. I think it's going to start in the trenches. Uh, Woodlawn has some uh, big guys up front. They've got to do their job tonight in stopping the run game. And, of course, they've got to get off the field on third down tonight more so than anything. They did a good job of that last week, did a great job coming out in the second half and really having some momentum. They've got to do that same kind of thing tonight. What do you think? It's like Keith said, you got to stop the run. Get them in third and long. You can't have any third and shorts. If you get them in a the third and long and force them to throw, I think you have a chance of stopping them. What do you have on that? Well, you're saying they run outside, so they're going to have to, those, those ends are going to have to contain. And if they can, you know, and, and your linebackers are going to have to plug the holes, your defensive linemen are going to have to have to hold up that line. So. That, that, that's going to be the key to the game in the trenches. Yeah. Now, a lot of things with Woodlawn, they have the new facility. Do you think that's going to also help real quickly get a lot of people to stay here at the school? One, the attendance has been absolutely incredible here. Uh, full house, every home game here. It's going to be the same kind of thing tonight. Looking for a big game from Woodlawn, and I predict that the Woodlawn Colonels will come out victorious tonight. I think anytime you have a stadium on campus at your school, that's yeah. a great thing yeah. for the band, the cheerleaders, for everybody. I think that's great to have a stadium here and that home field advantage, it plays in their favor. And what do the alumni think about? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you don't give up your home team. <laughs> so I, I think this is a wonderful thing to, to be playing here at home and you got the crowd there pulling for you. Yeah. That gives you a little incentive to play hard. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, this, this facility, once you get here, you see how beautiful it is. This is a well-put-together facility. This is an absolutely world-class facility here. Uh, got great points of view throughout the stadium. The press box is first class, of course. The weight room is first class. And the field is incredible. Uh, got a great turf here. And uh, we're looking forward to a great ball game with a huge crowd here tonight, Brett. Yeah, I don't think people really realize how much facilities make a difference. <laughs> they don't. You know, we talked about that with other schools. So it's yeah. great to have that, especially a stadium. It's the, it's the first year here, first couple of games here. They won their first game here last week. So let, let's see if they keep bringing the W this week, too. Okay. All right, guys. Well, now, it is week number nine for Birmingham City Schools football. This week, there were some big wins and a few surprising losses. Let's get to the BCS Coaches Poll Top 5. Remaining at number one are the Parker Thundering Herd, who wins in a nail-biter against the Mountain Brook Spartans, 13 to 10. At number two are the six and two Rams of Ramsey, who ran rough shot over the John Carroll Cavaliers, 28 to zero. The Renona Dragons are still in the number three spot as the Dragons breathe fire on the Hayden Wildcats, 49 to seven. 
in at number four are the four and four Carver Rams who dropped one to the Jasper Knights 42 to 50. However, this is Carver's second straight loss. Now, in the in the solid number five position are the one and five Woodlawn Colonels who got their first win last week over Jackson Ola Mustangs 38 to 36. Well, guys, did they get the poll right this week? Did the coaches get it right? They got it absolutely right. <laughs> I, I think Parker by far is the number one team in the Birmingham City area. Of course, Ramsey, the defending state champions, 5A coming up in number two. Winona, uh, just a great team, great offensively and defensively, and they uh, really solid on special teams. And of course, Carver with a four and four record. And of course, the Woodlawn Colonels with a big win last week. They've got to come out, get another win tonight, get another win next week against Minor, and they're in the playoffs. There you go. There we go. What you got, Mike? Man, I think they got it right. You got Parker who went against Mountain Brook last week, and they only held them to 10 points, and they got the W. So, that I mean, that's a, a great performance out of them. And I'm just going to jump over to other schools to Woodlawn. They got that first win. You build off that momentum. You keep winning. Like Keith said, if you win out, you're in the playoffs. So I think they play off that momentum from last week. They got a great shot of moving up the poles. <laughs> What do you got down there oh, in the you end? you know what I'm going to say. They got it right. <laughs> Woodlawn has to be in the numbers, though. But uh, I, I think this is, a, a, this is a start for them, and I believe this is going to propel them to, uh, to do better. Okay, now on to the top five defenses. The Thundering Herd are in the top spot again, and Parker's Carlton Duncan led the way with two interceptions with middle linebacker Delarian Lake recording 12 tackles. In at number two are the Ramsey Rams, whose defense shut out the Cavaliers of John Carroll. At number three are the Dragons of Renona, whose defense hammered the Wildcats of Hayden. Now, Woodlawn Colonels moved into the fourth position, and the Rams of Carver hold on to the fifth spot after giving up 70 points over the past two weeks. Well, panel, what about the defense? I think defensively, if I were uh, doing it, I'd, I'd say that I'd move Carver up to number four, move Woodlawn down to number five. And uh, I think they got it right with Parker, again, being the number one defensive team. They have some absolute stud athletes they do. on defense. Uh, they're they do. defensive backs, linebackers, as well as linemen. So uh, I think they got it right. Okay, Michael. I, I have no objection to this poll. That poll is right. I mean, Woodlawn. I mean, Woodlawn is still doing their thing. But when you look at Parker and Ramsey, they're playing some great defense. And we saw what Winona did last week to Hayden. They're, they played great too. Yeah, they but, did. They did. But they did. I, I mean, the, the, that poll is right. Okay. I, I go with that. I agree with you. You like it? Okay. Well, look. Well, here we go, guys. Okay. And finally, the top five offenses in the BCS. The Ramsey Rams take the top position after producing 28 points against the John Carroll and falling to number two are the Herd of Parker, even though the Herd's Naheem Oford account, uh, accounted for two TDs and 112 yards. Winona is number in the number three spot with the outstanding performances of quarterback Anthony Young, running back Dominic Bruce, and wide receivers Demarcus Johnson and Omar Ho uh, Holcomb. In the number four position, the Rams of Carver, and after scoring 28 points last week, the Woodlawn Colonels take the fifth position. Give it to me. I think the Ramsey Rams are by far the best <laughs> offensive <laughs> team. Why would I think the, you would say that? <laughs> in the city of Birmingham. And the reason I say that is because of their quarterback play. Uh, uh, Cam Keenan has done an outstanding job this year in directing Ramsey's offense. Of course, they have the great running back, Ashton Ashford, who's done extremely oh, yeah, yeah, well. Yeah. They've got great wide receivers. And so I think Ramsey is number one. Okay. I disagree. I think Winona should be number one for what Hayden, <laughs> what what they did to Hayden. <laughs> Hayden had four they minutes did? left yeah, on yeah, the clock yeah. and they took delay of games for the end of the game. So Winona could not get the ball back and score. So I think Winona should be number one for that. Okay. What do you got there? Well. Woodlawn is number one to me. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> Not in the records. Though. All right. All right, guys. Well, up next, there have been changes in the BCS Top Bands poll. Stick around to see what school tops the charts.
page counts, looks to encourage reading outside of the classroom and inside of our homes by at least 15 minutes, three days per week. Now, in order to help our young students succeed, we need total commitment across the board. That's parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, mentors, and so many more. So join us. Join us in sharing the love of reading with our kids. To learn more or to volunteer to read with our students, please visit behamufirst.org. That's behamufirst.org. Or at 205-320-0879. Listen, thanks to all of you for being Page Pals. And Keith Mims, how's everybody this week, man? Doing absolutely great, Brett. Looking forward to a great game tonight and uh, great band performances and cheerleader performances. And here we go. It is week number nine in the Birmingham City Schools football band season. This week, let's see how they stack up. In the top slot are the Marching Thundering Herd of Parker. They received some honors this morning as they were recognized as the, B, as the CBS Channel 42 Band of the Week. They showed energy, precision, and they had great field showmanship. In the number two position are the Rams of Ramsey, who have mastered the marching style leg lift. In at number three are the Rams of Carver, who have shown great effort, and they will show up and show out. The Jackson Olin Mustangs are in at number four. Their drum major should be named Mr. Showtime. The J.O.'s band simply has a great show. Holding on to the number four post are the Dragons of Winona. They have really cleaned up their show, and they are showing great promise. Well, guys, you think football's hot. <laughs> now we're talking about this. I get more pushback from this than anything else. I, I happened to see the Jackson Olin band last week here at uh, Woodlawn. Jackson Olin should be number two on there, I think, <laughs> right behind Parker. Uh, Jackson Olin's, their dancers are great. The yeah. band is great. The precision is great. So I'd go Parker one, Jackson Olin two, Ramsey three, Carver four, and Winona no. five. Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> All right. What you got, Michael? What you got, man, guys? I'm going to take it a different route, man. Everybody's number one. I, I, I don't, oh, don't, don't, don't want to I think he's running for mayor. I think Michael is running for mayor. <laughs> I don't want to knock anybody's bad. I don't want to <laughs> knock them. But everybody does a great job. But I have to say, when your team is number one, you probably play harder. So Parker's number one. I probably think their bad plays harder. They, they show it out for their team. So when your team wins, you play hard and you show out for them. There you go. What you say? What do you got? Well, I looked at the polls, and they don't say anything about home field advantage. So <laughs> Woodlawn has the home field advantage. That's right. So we'll, we'll see what's gonna, what that poll is going to look like after the night. Well, I thought it was surprising <laughs> when we talked to the band directors, and they told me about Mr. Showtime. And that's what they all said. He's Showtime. So, you know, what do you have to say about that? So, you know, let's move on to the next one. Now, up next, we'll show you some game day foods to eat while watching BCS Under the Lights. We'll be right back. Making me hungry, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> so this is starts in Birmingham City Schools. Teachers, preachers, professors, college presidents, CEOs, chefs, and welders, business owners, too. They all get their start in Birmingham City Schools. BCS offers an engaging curriculum in all grades, pre-kindergarten to prepare our children for the future, award-winning academies, and career technical programs. Middle schools focused on career paths and early college for scholars who want to get ahead. Go to bmcityschools.org. Begin your road to success in BCS today. Hello, I'm Fred Davenport. There are many career options that are available to the students here at Woodlawn High School. 
Joining us today is Mrs. Dorothy Gibson. She is over the Career Technical Education Program here at Woodlawn. So first off, talk about the different programs that are available. Okay, here at Woodlawn High School, our students have the opportunity uh, to, train, to uh, matriculate through different programs here. We have uh, computer science, cosmetology, finance, business market education, graphic arts, as well as JROTC. With those programs, they're able to earn industry-recognized credential. Uh, with the cosmetology and finance and business programs, they can earn a customer service credential. Also, with the business and finance programs, they can earn a credential in Microsoft Office Suites. That includes Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. With the computer science program, they're able to earn a certification in Python. Uh, our graphic arts, we do Adobe certification. And of course, with JRTC, they have the opportunity to earn a leadership degree as well as earn additional placement if they decide to join the military upon graduation. You know, one thing I learned about the young people here at Woodlawn is, you know, they want to be entrepreneurs. Yes. They want to own their own businesses and yes. make lots of money. Yes. And you all are giving them an early start, uh, early education on how to do that. Yes, we are. We have the Academy of Business and Finance here that, that works hand in hand with the CT department. And with us, that collaboration, the students are able to display their skills, the entrepreneur talents. So for instance, we have a student here who does balloon arches. We use him a lot for our different events. We have a, a student who was uh, previously here who came through uh, Woodland High School. He's a photographer now. We have a student who's the manager at Jones Valley Teaching Farm out there. So they each have uh, the option where well, they are living their dream. They're managing different businesses, using the entrepreneurial skills gained here to uh, advance their money mm -hmm. as well as their skill set. And uh, outside of the uh, different programs, you all have organizations here yes, at Woodlawn. Yes. Talk about that. Okay, so each uh, pathway has a CTSO, that's, that's for Career Technical Student Organization. Uh, the Finance Pathway, which is my pathway, we have DECA, uh, Business has FVLA, Computer Science has TSA, which is Technical uh, Technology Student Association. JRTC, of course, has a leadership program. Graphic Arts and Cosmetology does Skills USA. So each of those programs has different tasks. They have the opportunity to go compete and earn um, placement to go complete on a national level. They also have the option to be a state leader mm -hmm. um, here. So we have, we have many different opportunities for the students to get, get involved. And you know what, there may be some parents out here who want to know more about these programs, yes. but don't know where to go. Okay. How should they, where can they go to find out that information? Actually, the, the first place they can visit is Willem High School webpage. They can go to the four parents section and scroll through that way. They can go to the, uh, the faculty page and each teacher has a listing of their discipline or the courses they teach. They can learn out that way. Uh, we have our syllabus posted online to give you an outline of what the, what the students will be learning. And of course, they can visit the district webpage. They mm -hmm. can go to our career technical student webpage, uh, career technical education page on the student, on the district website, rather. You know, that was a lot of great information that you just gave out. So parents, please have your child take advantage of the many opportunities that are available here at Woodlawn High School. Don't forget to visit the school's website. Back to you. Welcome back to BCS Under the Lights. This is a live look at the Woodlawn Colonels football field and their game will be coming up against Gardendale tonight at 7 p.m. Now, to one of our favorite segments. We have some good game day options that you can munch on while watching our live broadcast. Now, joining us live is Birmingham chef Sean DeLang with Soul Love Kitchen. <laughs> you know that sounds good right there. All right, <laughs> Chef DeLang, tell us about these first items here. Okay, so with doing um, doing uh, football food and game day food, I like to do something really quick and something easy. So right here we have the Philly cheese steak nachos. All right. And they have a homemade avocado ranch and a homemade cheese sauce on top. Homemade. Okay, homemade. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, homemade is on the way. <laughs> now, now that, you said that's the Philly mm -hmm, right that's the here. Philly. That's mm -hmm. the Philly. 
Okay, how did you come? Hey, guys, I don't know about you, but I'm about to grab a plate because I'm going to try some. Now, they can sit here and act like they, they don't want none. I told you, Chef, you up here with some manly men. We're going to at least get something going on right here. Tell us how you came up with these these recipes right here. Well, with the Philly cheesesteak, you know, I with my with the restaurant that I have or my business I have, I do regular Philly cheesesteaks. So I decided to say, hey, let's just throw that on some tacos to make it really easy to grab and so that's how I came up with the Philly cheesesteak nacho. Oh, there you go. <laughs> now, what do you have right here with you? Now, these are my babies. These are fish and shrimp tacos and um, a homemade slaw oh, yeah. and yeah. I'm going to go in. Yeah. I'm going to jump in. Let's yeah. try this. In. Mims and, and, and the QB over there, they can act all well. shy if they want. <laughs> Tell us more about this. I'm just trying to keep from knocking them down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so with my, um, the fish and the shrimp um, tacos, good. I wanted something quick and easy, and I am a seafood person. Mm -hmm. I eat seafood every day. So I decided, let's do some tacos. So I tried it, and it worked. And then everybody likes it. Okay. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad you got that one. Now you have your third item over here. What okay, is that? Okay, so these are just something just grab and go. Grab and go. These are the taco, um, taco cups. And I am a chicken girl. I'm not really big on the ground beef, but the taco uh, cups has uh, um, chicken. Then it has a homemade uh, guac, um, avocado ranch. Yeah. And it also has a homemade salsa. Okay. I'm, I'm All right. Now. We got all of this stuff right here. Mm -hmm. How can people reach you, and where are you located? I am in Homewood, and if you need to mm -hmm. reach me, 205-585-6763. And I am on um, social media, Facebook, up on the Sean Delane, S-H-A-U-N-D-E-L-A-I-N-E. Oh, Sean, man. these tacos are great, <laughs> man. <laughs> that is... I got That's another one. Yeah, How about do that? another one of those. Yes, sir. Here we go, y'all. There we go. Hey, now, you can do, you can cater, you can do the whole nine yards. I do, all, I do catering, I do private parties, I do, do it all. Okay. I'm just getting out there now, so hit me up and we'll work something out. Okay, well, we appreciate it. Now, up next, the Colonel's men's basketball team will join us, Michael Tart, to talk about their upcoming season. But first, we're looking live at the Woodlawn Colonels football team getting ready to come out for tonight's game. The pregame show continues after this break. These tacos are great. Oh, man, man I'm there. Yeah, I'm talking about <laughs> Second period is Angel Jones' favorite class at Woodland High School in Birmingham. It's when she's studying cosmetology, a class she takes seriously. I personally like this cosmetology class because she makes it fun. Angel comes from a family full of cosmetologists, and she hopes she can keep the legacy going. It's not just I just want to do it because it's easy. I honestly enjoy doing cosmetology. My family and friends let me practice on them, you know, just doing a little bun or a couple of braids. Anna Vanderbilt is the instructor for this cosmetology class. Okay, y'all know this is a prostation class. She's new to Woodlawn and Birmingham City Schools. The opportunity to work with kids attracted Vanderbilt to Woodlawn. I was at a bona fide cosmetology school for eight years and I toured a high school and I was like, I think these kids would benefit more from me. Vanderbilt's goal is to prepare these scholars to pass exams in order to become licensed hairstylists. In addition to teaching the proper way to do hair, Vanderbilt is giving them knowledge about the business side of cosmetology. We went over the business skills on how to get a job and whether you want to rent a booth or you want to do commission or salary or different things like that, I told them all about how to get a job, what to do when they get the job, how to act on the job, you know, how to be a entrepreneur, all that. They learn all that here already. Jemaya Long plans to pursue another career path after high school, but she says she's learning valuable skills in the class that she can take with her. Something I have learned is how to properly wash hair, trimming as well. Also, we've learned about dyeing the hair. A lot of, a lot of things that I thought was appropriate for dying hair, I was wrong, and she taught us that. 
Vanderbilt has other big tasks, such as preparing her scholars for citywide and state competitions. The students also get to participate in hair shows. I'm Fred Davenport with BCS Media. Success starts early in Birmingham City Schools. At Early College at Woodlawn, students can get a jump start on college education, taking classes at Jefferson State Community College, Lawson State Community College, and UAB. They enjoy rigorous academics and a full high school experience at Woodlawn. All books and tuition for early college are free and transportation is provided to the college campuses. Scholars receive extra support as they tackle the rigor of college while managing traditional high school. It's an exciting opportunity. Go to www.bhamcityschools.org to learn more about early college at Whitlaw. Birmingham City Schools, success starts here. Hello, I'm Professor Snipes. I'm the director of bands at Miles College. I'm a proud alumni of Woodlawn High School. You're watching BCS Under the Lights. We're minutes away from kickoff. The Woodlawn Colonels will take on the Gardendale Rockets at 7 o'clock. Official high school basketball practice started on Monday. Woodlawn's men basketball team is ready for game number one. Joining us live is head coach Demetrius Turner. Coach Turner. Tell us about preparations for that first game. Hey, man, we just excited about basketball season coming up. You know, Monday couldn't come quick enough. Uh, guys in the gym, we've been working hard. Uh, we've been going hard the past week. And we're just excited about getting started. Uh, we got a great uh, group of young men that's just ready to come out and compete. Uh, but more, more, more often than anything, these are great kids, and we're just happy to have them in the program. Going from last year to what you've seen so far in practice, what have you seen that has stood out so far in just these couple of days of practice? Uh, I've seen growth. Uh, I've seen maturity. Uh, we started a young team, a uh, very young team, so we can only improve and get better as, as the season and as the years go on. And we're looking forward to having a great season, an exciting season, and these guys are here. They want to be here, and we're just ready to compete. Tell me about these three guys you've got sitting up here, man. They got to be special if they're sitting up here next to you. Very special, and like I said, great guys. So to my far left is Michael Richardson. He's a senior. Uh, we're looking for Michael to have a big season. He's been uh, with our varsity group for the past three years. Uh, we got Jeffrey Payne right here to my immediate left. Uh, Jeffrey is an 11th grader. Uh, we're expecting big things from him. He's a guy that can finish around the goal, uh, excellent rebounder. And to my far right is Timothy Dennis. Uh, he's a lefty. Uh, he can fill it up from deep. So we're trying to look forward to getting him a few shots and, and get the crowd uh, excited. So I'm, I'm going to start with Timothy real quick. Man, just talk about this season and what you expect to happen with Woodlawn. Uh, I expect us to just be more of a team, more engaged in what we have to do. You know, like the coach said, we've been working very hard and just being very mindful of what we know and what we have to back up from what last year. We got a lot of things that we need to prove and just to make sure that we just get our job done. Go back on the end. What, what does it take to bring that blue map back to Woodlawn? Uh, it take a lot of chemistry. It take a lot of fun. And more importantly, it take a lot of discipline. That's what we're really going to need throughout the rest of the season to be successful and have fun and get to where we want to go. And next to Coach, just talk about leadership and being a leader of this team. Oh. <clears throat> being a leader of this team, just get the team right, have everything right, everybody discipline, everybody being a team. So I feel like this year is get back time. Coach, just talk about that first game a couple of weeks away. Just talk about feelings and getting ready to get back on that hardwood. But November 7th, we have to travel over to Carver, and Carver has a great team. They have an outstanding coach. And so it'll be a challenge for us going over to Carver, but we expect to play well. We expect to play hard. And if we follow our fundamentals and, and, and do our job, then, you know, I think we'll be successful. What is it going to take to get that blue map here? Uh, it's going to take a lot of hard work. Uh, you know, we try to be 1-0 and every game we play uh, and let the chips fall where they may. All right, that's it for you, Coach. Glad you joined us, man. We expect to see good things out of Woodlawn this year, man. Thank you for having us, and we'll be right back after this.
more knowledge to go to college. You got to acknowledge what we learn that ain't no blogs. Educated. The Birmingham Promise is a program that provides students in the Birmingham City Schools with the resources and support they need to achieve their dreams. Through partnerships with local colleges and universities, the Birmingham Promise offers students the opportunity to pursue higher education tuition free. The Birmingham Promise offers students access to mentors, internships, and career development resources that chart a path to success. Birmingham Promise has kept her from having to worry about the financial part of going to college. That way she can focus more on school, on her grades, um, and achieving her degree. And this promise is not just for a select few. It is for every student in the Birmingham City Schools. Through the Birmingham Promise, Students are given the tools they need to succeed in college and beyond. They are prepared for the workforce, and they are equipped with skills and knowledge to make a positive impact on their communities. Together, we can help every student in Birmingham City Schools achieve their dreams and reach their full potential. What's up everybody, this is Mayor Randall Woodman, and you are watching BCS Under the Lights, a production of Birmingham City Schools. Keep it locked. Woodlands Middle School football team had a successful season. They ended their season six and one. Joining us live is head coach Justin Wisenhunt, members of the team. Coach, tell us what led to that team's success this year. Uh, pretty much, we just kind of focus on the little things, um, taking it back to where it all started in Little League and just focusing on fundamentals and discipline, um, doing what you're assigned to do and, and playing with your brothers. And um, when we first got there, we kind of separated as a team. Uh, you know, Woodland Middle School is a combination of Isaac, Hayes, and Putnam, so we had three different schools, so we had to get those guys that don't see each other every day, it's not in the classroom, working with each other every day to come together. Once we kind of got that piece together, we got the show rolling, and we, that led to the success of the season. How is it to keep a younger group of guys focused enough to, to play on a football team? Man, it's, it's hard. I can't lie. Um, <laughs> you know, it was new to me. This is my first year being a head football coach. Um, I just got done playing. Me being young, 24, um, it was kind of hard to get those guys to look at me as, like, not the big brother, but the, the coach. Mm -hmm. And um, But once I established that relationship, we kind of took off with it. These guys, like my like my little brothers, I love them to death. Talk about making that transition from being a player to being a coach and, and leading the team. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, uh, even when I was a player, though, I kind of always led. I was captain at Ramsey. I was captain at Troy, captain at Charlotte. Um, so leading would never been an issue for me. It was just kind of separating that, understanding that, like, you know, Coaching and playing are two different things. You know, it's easy to say it, but now you got to get out here and show her how to do it. And understanding that every child doesn't learn the same way. So I might have to teach it another way to this kid and then to the other. So once I figured that out, I, I'm, I'm enjoying the journey right now. Tell me about the three guys you got sitting up okay, here with so, us. So right here, I got my quarterback, Makai. I got Noah, my center, my linebacker, and I got Pierre for him, my, my D tackle, my D lineman. Uh, these guys are sending pieces to the team. They're all in the eighth grade, except Noah. Noah's in the seventh. Okay. Um, Noah's been a leader since day one. Um, that's why I got him up here with me now. Okay. He's going to lead the team going into next year. Um, Makai, special talent. He can play anywhere over the field. I see him being a big-time superstar one day um, at whatever high school he decides to go to. And then I got uh, Pierre for here. Um, monster. I mean, look at him. You know what I'm saying? He's about my size, and I'm I'm a grown man. So, you know, with three, three guys right here, they lead and get the guys there together for us to have success we have. I'm going to start with Pierre Four. You call him a monster. Just talking about being a monster on the football field. Okay, like, it's – you have to be known for it. Like, you have to be meant for it. You have to have the mentality for it. You can't just go on the field and just play around and not be focused in the game. You, have, you can't – like – 
it's hard to really explain, but you just have to do it. There's no other way to say it. You just have to do it. Coach, just talk about having that successful season, man. How how it all go for you? Um, well, first off, shout out to my staff. Um, we got five guys that's been there every day with us, and and shout out to Woodland High School and Coach Williams for giving us the tools that we needed to be successful. Um, we just kind of looked at it like taking one week at a time. I tell the guys, we're just trying to go one and zero. Uh, we can't focus on the outcome of next week. We can't focus on what this team did. We got to focus on us. We're trying to get better every week. So we started off with Fairfield. Um, and then we, we kept we kept it rolling. We had one loss this year at the Phillies Academy, and they're, they're going to play in the championship game next week. And, um, you know, just, just growing growing together as players and as a family, it kind of all worked out. I appreciate you, Coach. Thank you, man. Congratulations yes, on your season yes, so far, man. That was been good. You were finished six and one. Yes. That's a great thing. And congratulations to you all, too, for, for making that team happen. Woodlawn High School is home to the newest football stadium in Birmingham, but a couple of blocks down First Avenue North, from Woodlawn, you also find one of Magic City's newest restaurants here, Tommy, with another edition of Good Eats. Two Dough Girls Pizzeria opened up shop in May 2023, taking over the former Lehman Brothers space on First Avenue North. The menu ranges from appetizers and salads to pizzas and pastas, to sandwiches and desserts. But you'll notice there's something familiar with the names of these dishes. The menu is an ode to hip hop, with every item paying homage to classic tracks. The name of the restaurant itself is a clever nod to a classic Outkast song, which it shares with one of the pizzas on the menu. Among the appetizers, the cheese sticks are a tribute to the Wu-Tang Clan. Cheese rules everything around me. Under pastas, you can choose from Lil Wayne with the six foot, seven foot pasta, or J. Cole with the nobody's perfect lasagna. If you're a fan of P. Diddy, Perhaps you'll enjoy the All About the Benjamins salad. There's also a Build Your Own Pizza option, dubbed You Can Have Whatever You Like after T.I.'s hit single. And I'm here with one of the two Doe girls, Anita Craig. Anita. Hello, how are you? Not, not bad, how, thanks for having us here. Yeah, all right, well. Well, um, you are the baker and maker of this pie over here. Yes, Tell us about it. So this is the two Doe girls and a Cadillac. It is our extreme meat lovers. It is the queen of all meat. It comes with pepperoni, ground beef, Italian sausage, a sweet copa, and a salami. And right. it is just delicious. Well, <laughs> well I'm gonna take a, a piece of this American pie and take a bite out. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, that cheese pool. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. I mean, Miss Craig. Oh, okay. This is so fresh and so clean. <laughs> this has been Good Eats. Bombs over Baghdad. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get that. Birmingham City Schools exceptional students had a blast today during the boo bash inside the gym at Woodland High School. There were treats and crafts for the students. A few Woodland football players were there to show the students a few dance moves. Doing tattoos, arts and crafts, and playing games with them, just having fun with them, showing them a special time. Even though they're exceptional, it don't matter. It shows that we're getting back to the community, and we just want to have fun with them. They've been talking about it, the Boo Bash since they came into school in August, so it's just really exciting for them to get to see those um, other students, their friends, um, people that they've known for years. Well, they'll do it for the pre-show. The main show starts right now. Under the lights, I'm your host, Brett Oates, along with my co-host, Michael Tart, who's on his way up. Welcome to the main show, and how is everything going this evening, everybody? We're, we're, we're here at the brand-new Sparkling 
clean and shiny Woodlawn Colonels Stadium. It is good to be here tonight. It's a beautiful night as they take on the Rockets of Gardendale. We had a big show last week by the Woodlawn Colonels who surprised everybody, or I should say not surprised, but came up with a big win last week, something that they had been working on uh, for quite some time. This is BCS Under the Lights. We're here at the brand new Woodlawn Colonels Stadium. We are happy to be here. It is a wonderful night, and the Colonels of Woodlawn are looking to get their second straight win. So, if you haven't had a chance to get here, this is one of the things you need to get here to see about this beautiful stadium. We also have been able to talk, and we'll get to it, how we were able to talk to the coaches and some players here at Woodlawn and how they are, this has been just energetic for them this week here at Woodlawn. Just a fantastic night tonight, and we are excited to be here. So, as they start to get ready to put the game out on here, we only have five minutes uh, left before they get off to the kickoff, and we will be here for the whole thing. Now, Steve Brown, my man, is off tonight. We are going to be here. Michael Tart is taking up the slack for us, and he's coming in. My ESPN future broadcaster coming in. Here he is. Yes. How you doing tonight, Mike? Uh, we're doing good, man. We're just happy to be here tonight. You know, it was a great pre-show. Uh, this place is really, really something else. I've seen it going by it on the highway. You can see it. But once you get in here and you actually see the turf, the stadium, how well it is built, this facility, it, it, I, I, can, I don't have anything to say how the Birmingham City School Board and with the help of uh, uh, Dr. Sullivan, what a great job they did in putting this all together. The administration can enjoy it. I love to see on-campus stadiums at high school, and this is a great thing for Woodlawn. Oh, yeah, when you have an on-campus stadium, that makes such a big difference, not yeah. only for the students, but for the community to come out and support the team because you don't have to drive. You, mm -hmm. And if you do drive, it's a short one, and you are uh, just coming over here to this beautiful stadium. And I also like that you can see the highway from here. I love it's that. Just kinda, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And also you can see the airplanes take off in the distance, too, by the airport. <laughs> oh, I have not even noticed that yet. Okay. Well, that that is really great, man. I mean, this is a modern facility. You know, the Woodlawn School uh, reflects a community of excellence in sports, player development, and community engagement. You know, serving as a hub of pride and unity for the school and the community. The legendary, the legend, uh, legendary of winning at Woodlawn continues. Now, as you well know, there's, you know, I saw the movie a uh, few years ago about Woodlawn. Yes. Uh, yes. Here, you know, and when you see it someplace else, then when you come here and you actually see Woodlawn, it is one of those things where you say, is this the actual school that I was looking at with Tony Nathan <laughs> in the movie? And people are like, yeah, matter of fact, that was the, his homeroom right yeah. there. And you're, a, it's just unbelievable. It's just the history that's here. I mean, that that that's just something. I mean, I'm, I'm from Mobile, but still I heard about Woodlawn and I, I saw some of the movie and it's like, man, to be here myself, to actually look at the building and to just be here is just something. Yeah, well, here we are. You know, we are so excited to welcome you to season number two to of our broadcast where we are shining positive light on the student athletes of Birmingham City Schools. That's right, Brett. Viewers can watch our game coverage in three formats. That's NFHS Network, the Birmingham City Schools YouTube page, and Livestream.com backslash BCS. So you can check that at NFHS Network, Birmingham City Schools YouTube page, and Livestream.com backslash BCS. There you go, man. You can't get it any better than that. Now, Let's take a look at the Woodlaw players' roster. The 
Woodlawn High School football, man. This is a wonderful thing. Now. really does not reflect the talent that they have here at Woodlawn. You know, last week they, they you know, the, it just shows you how great this is. Put it together, they've been in games. Mm -hmm. It's not like they just did not have talent, but they've had games uh, that they just, they just couldn't get it across the finish line. To, to get that first win. But they got it last week, so good for them. It's like that light switch finally came on towards the end of the season for them, and they got it going. They they were able to pull off that 38-6 victory over J.O. And if they win out, they still have a shot. That's the thing. If they yeah. win out, they still have a shot for postseason. So it all starts tonight. You got to get it going tonight. And this Gardendale team, they're also coming off two wins. They just started getting going, too. So these are two teams that, that are late bloomers to the season. Hopefully, Woodlawn can keep it going. Okay. Now, you know, tonight we're coming to you live from the Woodlawn High School as the Colonels take on the Gardendale High School Rockets. That's right, Brett. This is the first time we're broadcasting from Woodlawn's new football stadium as well. Okay. Now, this is Woodlawn's inaugural season for their new stadium and the Colonels have history, made history last Friday with their first win of the season on this turf, adding to the program's storied history in Birmingham City School and the state as a whole. Part of this program's rich history is chronicled in this 2015 movie, Woodlawn, which you see a clip playing right now. Your moment. This is your time, so you go and take it. Now, the movie Woodlawn highlights the 1973 Colonels team, which led by running back Tony Nathan, who I saw when he played with the Miami Dolphins, mm -hmm. uh, and the challenges the players faced as a team during the community struggle with desegregation. Going back to Tony Nathan, he was one of the great Colonel alums to make it to the NFL, just like you said, you saw him playing for the Dolphins, but he was drafted by the Miami Dolphins after playing for the University of Alabama, went on to play in two Super Bowls during his career. Yeah, this wonderful. Now, the Colonels also have former NFL linebacker uh, Carlos Dansbury, who was drafted in 2004 by the Arizona Cardinals. The Auburn University standout played 13 years in the NFL with four different teams, but also was able to end his career with the team that drafted him, the Arizona Cardinals. Some of the best talent to grace the NFL from right here in this great city of Birmingham. Yes, yes, yes. Now, it's how we love to say here at BCS, success truly starts here. And speaking of success, I would like to, I would be remiss not to mention Roca McKinsley, Henry uh, Gilmer, and the legendary Bobby Bowden, who was one of the all-time winningest coaches in college football. That's right, Brett Bowden coached right here at Sanford, West, and he went, and went on to West Virginia and finished up at Florida State, where he won not one, but two national championships. And you cannot forget <laughs> our special, special Woodlawn alum, Superintendent Mark Sullivan. Mark Sullivan, who also played for the Colonels during his time at the high school here as well. Now, let's take a look at the results of the BCS teams last week. Now, Parker came up with an impressive win on the road, 
to 10 in a 6A regional matchup against Mountain Brook. The Thundering Herd is now ranked fifth in the state in 6A. In the 5A state champs, Rams are still tearing up their region, beating John Carroll 28-0. The Rams are currently second in 5A play. Now, Winona gets back in the win column after dominating their dominating win against the Hayden Wildcats 49-7. Carver is still trying to find their way back to the win column after losing to Jasper in a heartbreaker 50 to 42. And as we mentioned, the Colonels got to the win column for the first time this season in a close battle with BCS opponent Jackson Olin, 38 to six. Now, as they start to take the, the field, we are excited about to see these guys get out here and Start, you know, just, just, just. Mm, mm, mm. We're going to have a good one on our hands tonight. <laughs> yes, this is going to be a good game tonight. You see a lot of people starting. As you said, there's a lot of people starting to fill up the stadium on the Woodlawn side. I was expecting to see Woodlawn uh, alums like Ricky Smiley and those guys <laughs> coming out here. That's what I was expecting to see. You wanted them to bring a show to the show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like this position. You can see where the Colonels. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not a bad seat in the house. And we have a light show going on as oh. well. We got the light show. Now, that's how you open the stadium when you have Friday night, <laughs> the special edition of Friday night under the lights. We under the lights. That's how the you're supposed light. to do it. They <laughs> That's exactly it, man. I love the position of this box, man, where you can see down on the sidelines. We can see the players. Uh, you can see what the coaches are doing. You see they're meeting with the players right now. It's almost like we're on the field. It is, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is not bad at all. Not bad at all. You have uh, coaches. You have to see the coaches coming out. The... It looks like that the Rockets of Gardendale it will, kick off. will be kicking off to Woodlawn. So we're getting ready to start and get this. Now tonight we are proud to announce that our game is brought to you by the Alabama Education Association, the ATF, and James W. Brown District Sales, AFLAC. AEA is our halftime sponsor and AFLAC. And ATF are our field goal extra point sponsors. Let's take a look at our Scholar Athletes of the Week brought to you by Traditions Chicken. Well, we're going to get straight to play. And the first thing we have on the kickoff, there is a flag. Let's see who it's on. It's down there. And another flag comes down. Let's see what's happening. As they start to sort things out, you see the guy in a white hat. He is coming. It is an illegal block in the back, pretty much, on Woodlawn. So they're going to take at least a 10-yard march backwards as they start to move back toward their own goal line. So it is going to be so it's going to be first down for the Woodlawn Colonels on their looks as if it is their 11-yard line. Now you have their quarterback ready to get in there. Number. So they're about to take the snap. You see the Woodlawn Colonels, they are lined up. You have Trey's off to the left. Snap. Drops back. Passes incomplete across the middle. Attempted pass to number 24. It's Dietrich Young. Dietrich Young. There you go. So it looks like they're coming out and they're ready to sling it. To they're throwing the ball tonight. They're, they're, they're backed up against their own end zone and they're not trying to run out. They're trying to pass their way out. And that was that was a, a quick pass we saw come out of that field. Had some heat behind it. There we go. We have, it is second down. And 10 for the Colonels on there. Still looks to be on on their 11-yard line. Yeah, 11 
You know, one of the things that the uh, uh, coach was telling us today, you know, the other day when I had a chance to talk to him, he said, you know, that win was an uplift and carry him, help these young guys, help them get through the season. It shows that they're not giving up. They're, they're still in it. They're still fighting. No matter how deep you are in the season, they're not giving up, and they still want to come out, play, and win. Well, snap. If he pulls him out, that was the play. So they drive him out. Looks like a gain of approximately nothing. So he gets back to the line of scrimmage. You know, it's going to be hard. It's difficult to see what these numbers are with this black on black. <laughs> and what it looks like very dim yellow trim around the number. So really Just, hard yeah, to bear see with us. Have. Bear with us as we, as we try to figure out some of these numbers. He drop back. He rolls outside. He finds up. Oh, he's going to. Oh, he tosses it. Is that going to be a flag? No, he doesn't. He gets outside of the tackle box, so that is not grounding. It is third down for the Colonels. Well, it is fourth down coming up for the Colonels on there. He lost yardage, so now it is fourth down and 20. I see that as a smart play. You don't take the safety. You get the ball out of your hands. You fall complete. You live to see another play, so that's a great job of not taking that safety. Yeah, you see the... Uh, As they start to go ahead and get their punting unit out on the field to the Colonels, you see the Rockets of Gardendale have sent back their receiver, number eight, Carter Jenkins, the wide receiver, punt returner. Whistle on the field, stop and play. You see what it was. I mean, you're, you're, you know, this is, again, you know, I just can't get over the field, but you have these guys out here that get the energy after last week's, last week's win. And it was their first one, and it was a close one. And, and you can see that, that you get energized from things like that because some teams can just mail it in and just give up, but you can see Woodline is still fighting, and then they're basically fighting for a playoff spot. It looks as though there's something wrong. That looks like there's a, a mechanical issue. The referee is coming over to the box trying to get the attention of the clock operator. As the clock operator is making, is talking with the official right now, and now he's headed back. I think they've gotten that fairly straightened out as they all get set up, and Woodlawn is about to punt. There's the snap, here's the kick, goes straight up, almost blocked. At the 30, it's covered by Woodlawn as it takes a Woodlawn bounce back toward the 40 to the, looks at the 40, 40. of Woodlawn. Wow, that was a really good roll and a good punt to get it out of there. <laughs> I thought it was almost a block. That punt went straight up in the air, so that was a great bounce and roll that it took to get at least an extra 10 yards back. Yes, yes. Now you have the Woodlawn defense coming out on the field. Their unit looks ready. The Gardendale is set up. Now we've seen them. They move pretty quickly, how they set up. Dead pass drops back. Pass, Gardendale broken up. No flags on the play back there in coverage. That looks to be number one, I believe. Zedarius Scroggins. As he was covered, he was over there. They already back and set up the Gardendale Rockets. And the shotgun in motion, drops back, passes. Over, just misses his target as quarterback for Gardendale, number five, Mack Beeson was aiming, trying to get it to his running back. You can see already that Gardendale is taking shots at this defense, and I, I truly believe if this defense, Woodlawn's defense, come out and play, they have a shot of stopping Gardendale. Yeah, Pookie Harris was the intent to target. They snapped the lineup again. Gardendale drops back. He's under pressure. He throws, connects, but Gard defense stops right at the 22 of Woodlawn. He pulls down 
number eight of Gardale, Carter Jenkins. Gardale, they're quick. They're right they're, back. They're very the quick. They're running that hurry up. Yes, he drops back. He throws. Short pass over the middle. Number zero, Morgan Harris. He gets about four yards on that one as they get it to start to move down on Woodlawn in Woodlawn territory. But it's some laundry on the field this time. Yes, there is in the backfield. That's usually a hole. As they Gardendale Rockets are moving backwards, yes, a hole pretty much on offensive linemen when they were coming around. I thought that the defensive end for Woodlawn was yes, Woodlawn defensive end was held as he was closing in on the Gardendale quarterback. I thought the way that he held him up, I, he stopped him. I was saying I, that was a hole. So now you have. It is third down and Ted up the middle. He runs up the middle, gets out. He bounced outside, number six, Boogie Harris. But he is stacked up by the defense. He gets about a good seven, eight yards on that run. That brings him down. Now to second down. They've already lined back up, drops back. He throws. Gardendale, and he scores. He makes a connection. The Rockets of Gardendale connect. 6 nothing on that quick pass to number 11, Ashton Vince. No, that's not Ashton Vince, number 11. That was Carter, Jen Carter Jenkins. Number 8, there you go. Good job. Way to pick me up. <laughs> there we go. Gardendale stepped out there lining up for the extra point. The kick for the extra point. Gardell and the kick is up and it is good. Now the ex that extra point is brought to you by the ATF, American Federation of Teachers, and we have the James W. Brown Athlete Agency. Give him a call for supplemental insurance to help pay out of pocket medical expenses your major medical insurance doesn't cover. Give him a call, 205-945-1120. James W. Brown, District Sales Coordinator for Athlete. So, they come out quick. They came out very quick. They didn't take much time off the clock to get that first score on the board. You can see they're firing it up with that hurry up offense. That, that, that offense is kind of tricky sometimes. It, it, it's good when it works, and it, it's very bad when it doesn't. But right. Wulon is going to have to adapt to that if they're going to play that hurry up all night. They are. They are going to, as you see, the Gardendale Rockets are set up, ready to kick off. And it's in the air. It is received by Woodlawn as they got it on his 10-yard line. He's moving up, trying to make his way stacked up. He is out of bounds. Number three for Woodlawn makes that return. Again, these, uh, we're going to try to do the best we can with these jerseys. <laughs> <laughs> Still seem to be having a little I think they're issues, having issues with, with the play clock. First down. First and ten for the Woodlawn Colonels on their 25. Woodlawn sets up. You've got Trey's on the right, on the left. Snap. Up the middle. He dances. He sings. He moves. Wow, nice move on there. A gain of about nine yards by Woodlawn up the middle. Now, that's what I'm talking about. You have their offensive line who are starting. If they can get into the groove and get that confidence, I'm pretty sure they can move the ball against Gardner. Just like you saw that, that, that the dancing and the moving, that's what you're going to have to do to hit those holes and keep Gardendale on their feet. Oh, in there, he fumbles, picked up by Gardendale in the backfield. Bad exchange by the quarterback and the running back. 
falls right there. Gardendale's right there to fall directly on top of it. Caden Combs falls right on that. Seemed like it was a bad handoff, and Caden Combs was right there to pick it up for Gardendale deep in Woodlawn's territory. Yeah, it looked like that the, that the quarterback did not put it all the way yeah. in through the stomach of the running yeah. back, and he didn't have it. And it just, just bad exchange from the beginning. I thought that Woodlawn would get something going. The Rockets have lined up. Pick, quick pitch to the outside. Number six dances to the outside. Flag on the play. Quick pitch over there to Boogie Harris. Boogie Harris. Looks like in the territory of holding again against Gardendale. As the officials discuss what's going on on that first down play. They're picking it up. So they're picking up the flag on oh. Michael, what do you think about how quickly that Gardendale is moving in the defense? Can they keep up with this pace? Hold up as Gardendale has lined up already, ready to take the snap. In this. He throws over the middle. Broken oh. up. Broken up in the end zone. Plan at hurry up. It, it, it can it can be dangerous on, on on both sides, even for the offense too. But Woodlawn has to adjust to that. You're going to have to play just as fast as Gardendale is playing too. So it's it, it's going to be a long night if they can't keep up with Gardendale. I know what you mean. It's going to be a long night. <laughs> Here we go as he dances outside back to Pookie. He bounces outside. Number six. Gardendale bounces. Gets down. It's Boogie Harris again. Gets down to about the five-yard line. Looks like it's first down, first and goal for the Rockets as they line up already. Take the snap, Gardendale. Looks like there's a flag on the flag. Play. Illegal substitution by the Colonels. And that's a part of that hurry up. That's going to be things you have to be, you have to watch out for. When they're snapping the ball fast. You got to have your guys on the field and they got to be ready to go. So it's half the distance to the goal line. So now it is first and goal at the two for the Rockets. They step back, hand it to him, and he plunges in for the score. It's Boogie Harris. Again, they're going to be feeding him all night. I mean, with that pace, that's got to be tough for the defense. It's got to be tough. Because you can't make those substitutions when you want. You have to be ready. You got to put your hand in the dirt and you have to go. Yeah. Gardendale lines up for their field goal. The snap kick is up and it is good. So just that quick. Just that quick. With 8.22 <laughs> left in the first. It is 14 to nothing. The Rockets of Gardendale over the Colonels of Woodlawn. But it's not over yet. Still a lot of time. Now that was brought to you by the American Federation of Teachers. And you'll be getting a call from James W. Brown of Aflac, the district sales coordinator. Give him a call, 205-945. 11.30, James W. Brown of Aflac. And I just wanted to say we appreciate these sponsors that we have oh, yes, we do. here for our games uh, here on Friday, special editions on Friday, but typically on Thursday night under the lights. And we're very appreciative of them. Two quick scores. Very quick. Two quick scores as Gardendale's lined up. They're up for the kick. They kick it deep. Looks like it's going to go out of balance, out of bounds. He's picking up. He's bringing it down the line. He's quickly thrown down by Gardendale on that right there. I wasn't able to pick up that number. Camera was on and it went off of it real quick, so we couldn't keep up with that. <laughs> was, who that was. So the Woodlawn Colonels now take over. First and 10 on their 25. Last exchange, they had a good run.
but a bad exchange between the quarterback and the running back. But first down, what long colonels are set up. One in the backfield. There's the snap, fake, quick throw, quick upfield. He turns, but he's shoestring right there. That was number 14. Christopher Murray. I thought he was going to get a little bit out there. So now Woodlawn seems to be going to their hurry up. Let's keep Gardell off balance. The thing about those hurry ups, you better keep the ball and you got to get the first down. I think uh, Woodlawn has the speed. If they can get it outside, they, they can, can get it going. It. Yeah. It is first down and 10. He rolls out to his right. He rolls. Oh, he's going to keep it. He's going to try to get up and try to make some yards. Ooh. He gets about two yards. We got a flag on that one. Look like that could be a late hit. Late hit out of bounds. Was that a late hit that out of bounds? That looked like a late hit. So you have. Oh, it's a defensive hold. Oh, really? Oh. Against Gardale. As they run off 10 yards as they move to Gardendale. Rockets backwards with Long Colonels marching forward. They place it at the 40, 49 of Woodlawn. They set up. First down. And it is a first down. So first and 10 for the Woodlawn Colonels. He picks it up. He pitches out. He's grabbed. Tries to get, gets about two yards on that. As to, yeah, Woodlawn seems to be going to a uh, quick offense like here. Trying to match Gardendale. So we're going to go speed for speed. Okay, they're set. Woodlawn is set. Second down. They're calling it out with 6.47 left in the first. They're bringing it. He drops it. Oh, he is hit. Oh, they brought the heat on that one. Yes, they did. I thought that might have been a flag of roughing yeah, the passer, almost, actually. Almost there. That was, that was quite there. But there, was no, there was no call on there. He missed it. It is now third down and about eight for the Colonels of Woodlawn as they keep their offense out there ready to get ready. The offense is in their hurry up as well. They get the signal from the sideline. They are set. There's the snap. He rolls out. Rolls out to his left. Fakes. Oh! He and fumbles! The ball right into the hands of number 56 of Gardendale. So that stops that drive, the second drive. And this was the second time they were driving. Second drive. Devian Siggers called on that ball for Gardendale. Two promising drives and with two fumbles. Two promising drives. The Gardendale offense hustles out on the field with 6.29 to go in the first quarter. 14 to nothing. Gardendale over the Woodlawn Colonels. Snap. Drops back. He's under pressure. He steps up in there. He tosses over the middle. Overthrows Morton his receiver. Harris. He was open. He was open. He was open. Just a little bit behind him, but he was open. Gardell lines up. Quickly back to the line, sets up in the shotgun. Sets one set back. He quick fires over the middle again. He gets outside. Bus run. He is thrown out of bounds after about a 10 to 15 yard gain. Quickly getting it out to the outside. They're already in the red zone. Just that quick in a couple of plays. They're already in the red zone. Gardendale again, back up to the line, sets up, drop back, under pressure. Thought I saw the hold, it's a quick toss, 
over to the outside, running back in the flat. He runs. He is run out right at the. They're calling it a touchdown, oh. but, but it's a flag, so we it's it's there holding. Hold. It's I thought, holding. I thought I saw the hold. I thought I saw the hold. The way the defensive end stopped and the way he yeah. stood up, and it was right in front of the official. So it all comes back. So Woodlone's defense, are, they're putting on, particularly their defensive ends, are really putting on a they're, show. They're getting in. They're getting in there. They <laughs> they're are. getting in there. They just have to finish it out. Gardell back at the line with their first down in approximately 15 as they throw deep in the corner. Oh, I thought that was going to be picked off by the yeah, It was very close. It was very close. So you have second down with five minutes and 43 seconds left in the first. Gardell up 14 to nothing over the Colonels of Woodlawn. Michael, what do you think about what Woodlawn is doing? Hold up, let me get this play off. Gardell sets up. Man in motion, shotgun, drops back. Here comes the defense, bubble screen. He's over there. He is, oh, man, he is dragging some folks. He's dragging he some is, people, man. That's Ashton Vice. Wow. With the catch. Look like he's playing both sides of the ball. He's listed as an outside linebacker, but he's looking like a, a, a big tight end out there. Yeah, exactly. Gardell already steps, gets back. He's under pressure. He steps up. He's trying to roll. He's throwing to the end zone. It oh, is caught in the corner. Gardell. Logan Fitzgerald with that touchdown. What a grab by him. Just that fast. 20 to nothing. Just that quick. That hurry up offense. Just that quick. Yeah. Gardell trots out its extra point. They trot out. As they get up. I didn't think that they would be able to score like that. I really didn't think they Me would neither. be able to score that fast. Me neither. I, I, I didn't envision seeing 21 points up, or tw I'm sorry, yeah, 21 points up now, and you still have five minutes left in the first quarter. So that extra point, that was brought to you by the American Federation of Teachers, the ATF, and it was brought to you also by our favorite guy over at Affleck, James W. Brown, at Affleck, 205-945-1120. Remember, you can give him a call for a supplemental insurance to help pay out-of-pocket medical expenses. Your major medical insurance doesn't come. That's Affleck, and we have the ATF, our Extra Point Sponsors. Your thoughts so far, James? It's... I didn't expect to see it like this. I didn't expect to see three touchdowns that quick from Gardendale. Again, with, with we've only played six minutes of football, just about seven minutes. I didn't expect to see three touchdowns up on the board that quick. Yeah. But with, with that hurry-up offense, anything can happen with that, though kickoff that there he receives it for Woodlawn he sees that before he's trying to that bounce back it looks like he's going to make a little move he gets out there's a flag coming in after that run he made a little something out of nothing yeah, he did he did number three that looks like Michael Gavian Let's see what we have here. It is against Woodlawn. As they're going to march it off, another five yards. We have five minutes and six seconds left in the first. 21 to nothing, Gardendale. The Colonels of Woodlawn, zero in this first. First down. It is first down for the Colonels. As they have trays on the left. As they set up, they drop back. Up the middle, nice run! Oh. Up the middle, he breaks it! Trying to call, he's trying to pull that to Gardendale, number four. That was Jalen Harris. 
That could not be number four. <laughs> that was number four. Number, or, number two. Number two, so that's Mikhail Jacks. Woodlawn now getting in motion. They've lined up quickly, getting their offense revved up. First and ten for the Woodlawn Colonels as they feel like they're starting to put together a drive here with 4.41 left. Fake handoff, bounces outside. Turns it up. Pulled out. Whoa, it looks a little... Uh, it looks a little close, but there's no flag thrown no, on that one. No flag. Number seven on that Cornelius Hudson. Dutt is going to... I think he waited a little too late. I think he turned it up a little earlier, faked it a little earlier, turned it up. I think he could have gotten a little bit more. He would have got a little more green in front of him to go. Woodlawn sets up. Second down. On the 43. Handoff. He bounces upside. Getting back up the middle. Gets it. Looks like close to a first down for Woodlawn. Looks like that running game is finally opening up for them. They're getting it going. Nice bounce. How he got back up in the middle. What do you oh. think? He cut back. Uh, I mean, you, I think they have the speed to, to run, uh, outrun Gardendale. They keep getting the cuts and hitting those holes like that. They can get back in this game. Absolutely. Let's get one score. <laughs> and we can start making this some sort of game out of this. They lined up Woodlawn. He's lined up in the shotgun. Snap. Up the middle. There he goes again. I think they see some first down yeah, for the Woodlawn Colonel. It's Michael Jackson again on that carry. Gets the first down. Also first time on the other side of the 50 in Cardindale territory. It is first down with two minutes and 55 seconds left. The Colonels line up in the shotgun, back at the line, ready to take the snap. It's called snap. Hand off again. Fake. He's going into the corner. He is out of bounds. And a flag. Looks like I thought that might be a little bit of roughing the passer. It is. Roughing the passer against Gardale. That's going to be a personal foul, 15 yards. As they march him back down the field, they're now into Gardendale territory. The Colonels of Woodlawn, what do you think? Do you think they're starting to get a little confidence now? I think that confidence is coming back, and it's with that run game. I mean, I wouldn't switch away from it. It's working. I wouldn't go away from something that's working good for you right now. The Colonels lined up, quick snap, quick jet. Left, he dips up in there, he gets in there. That is a, not a first down, but close to it. Or is it? It a is a down. garden, it is a Woodlawn. First down, the Colonels are starting to drive. Well into, <coughs> well into. <coughs> Gardendale, they set up in line. They are on the Gardendale 11 in motion. Snap, quick pitch, hits and drops the ball. No advancement right there, so incomplete pass with the Colonels second down. On about, you see this. This is what, about the 16 yard line? Yeah, maybe Six, about the 16. 16, 17, yeah. 17 yard Second line. down. A minute 47 seconds left in the first. The Colonels are set at the line. Again, back in the shotgun snap. Fakes it, gives it in there, but Gardell meets him. They have a meeting at the quarterback. A loss on the play. Third down. A loss of approximately three. Third down for the guard down for the Woodlawn Colonels. It's a minute, 20 seconds left in the first as the clock is continuing to run. The 
Colonels are set up. Shotgun. Jolly out the play. There is a timeout call by the Woodlawn Colonels. Timeout by the Colonels with a minute and two seconds left. This so that's why we do this break. Let's take our break. We'll toss it down to the truck. What's up, everybody? This is Mayor Randall Woodman, and you are watching BCS Under the Lights, a production of Birmingham City Schools. Keep it locked. back live here at Woodlawn Colonel Stadium. The Woodlawn Colonels are down 21 to nothing right now with a minute and two left in the first. However, the Colonels of Woodlawn are driving against the Rockets of Gardendale. The Gardendale Rockets defense back out, but now the offense for the Colonels have lined up. They look like they're starting to get into some sort of rhythm. And the shotgun. Snap. Quick throw into the corner. Six point. Woodlawn. Six. In the corner. No flags on the field. Nice. What a throw. <laughs> what a catch. All the way around, you are absolutely right. And there's the light show. Light show. Under the light. Oh, so maybe yes, this will be the <laughs> thing now when they score. All right. Okay. <laughs> We get you <laughs> with 56 seconds left. That's exactly what the Colonels of Woodlawn really needed. Nice job, nice execution to the corner pattern, to the quarter and, uh, uh, pattern that was tossed. Those are the drives you need. Those yeah. are the drives that are going to get you back into this game. Your defense just has to stop that hurry up offense of Gardendale. But that, those type drives right there. Colonel's going the for two. They set up. He drops. He passes. Oh, is there no flag? No flag. Six to 21 for, for the Colonels. wonder why he doesn't go ahead and get the seven. Yeah, he just take the seven. Get, that one. Just get that uh, one, you know, the get the extra point and go ahead. It is now 6 to 21. The Gardell, Gardell Rockets are up 6 to 21 against the Colonels of Woodlawn, who just had six on an excellent drive, excellent play. Michael Jackson did most of the work by running the ball downfield on those long runs he had. So, and also we, we got a preview before we got into it. He's one of our scholar athletes as well. Yeah. Yeah. So Woodlawn now is set up to kick it off to the Gardell Rockets with 56 seconds left in the first. Kick is up, and it is out of bounds against the Colonels. What do you think about that drive? They need those drives. You, you, you got to keep those drives ready to go to stay in this game. That, that was a great drive. The running game worked, and I mean the passing game worked as well too, but the running game did the bulk of it, so might have to mix it up a little bit. Yeah, they do now. Can the defense, with 54 seconds left in the first, do something to slow down the Gardendale Rockets with that quick offense? Making a change. Defense for the Colonels, getting their communication straight on everybody's assignment. The Gardendale Rockets are set up, snap, handoff. Number three, but he's hit at the line, but he still gets another four, maybe six yards on the carry. Look how quickly Gardendale just pops yeah, they right waste up. And they, no they waste time. No time getting back to the line. Gardendale drops back. He's under pressure. 
as he snap, he throws it off. Ow! Oh! Does he get up? I thought he was going to take him down, but they get there. The defense stops him. Looks like. That's a loss of a yard on that play. So it will be third down and approximately four yards to go. As you said, he lost five yards. Third and five for Gardell as they hustle back to the line of scrimmage and they get set. Snap. Drops back. Pressure again from Gardell. Fumble. He fumbles. Fumble. It looks like. Whoa, he's calling oh. it a live ball. He says it is live. Uh-oh, they're going to have to sort this one out. They're telling me to he keep going. Said, one ref said live ball. The referee, the head, the white hat says it is live. Lyman picks it up for Gardell and rumbles, tumbles, bumbles for about <laughs> 60 yards down the field on a fumble. If that stands, Rhett Fitzpatrick will have a touchdown that he didn't even ask for. After the play that the defense played, that was the, obviously we're saying that the play was called dead. The referees are going to have to get together on this. Here we come. This is going to be, he said he was, hand was in motion. Let's see what the call is as the discussion is going on between the officials. It is going to be as he comes out. Let's see what this is. He's going to have to explain this one. It's, it's either fourth down. It's either <laughs> Woodlawn's ball. Let's take a look at this. He drops back. He's under pressure. He is hit. And obviously the ball's a fumble. There it is between everybody else. He just reaches in and picks he it up. He picks it up there. and White Hat it said it was a live ball. Let's see what the ruling is going to be. This is one of those plays nobody's going to be happy once, whatever yeah. way this goes. But I thought so it was dead. I thought it was dead too. I was thinking we're looking at a fourth down. But you had a referee call and saying the ball was live. Because you could see him on the field motioning when everybody else, because the other officials were calling the ball. There you go. Look at this replay. He just picks it up out of there like a loaf of bread. He just picks it up. There it is. This is mine. I, 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 think, that, and I'm I gone. think that ball is dead. That, that, that has to be fourth down. That, that, wow, that has to be fourth down. The other officials, as they are discussing, let's see how they sort this one out. But you saw where he just, he was, he was tackled, it was fumbled, it was punched out. There were bodies all around it. There were bodies all around it. And he just reached out and picked it out of there. Michael, these are the th times that you wish that, and I'm glad I'm not a referee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, you know. I even thought about taking the class to be a referee, but. <laughs> and I, we I, need them. They I, do a great job. I, I'm going to stay away from that after seeing a play like this. I'm going to stay away from that but class. But how often do you see a play like that? <laughs> you, they need you know. younger guys like you out you there. <laughs> in the game, helping these young <laughs> men play the game that they love. You like being around the sport as well. You know, uh, they do a, a really great job. We give them a, 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 a tough oh, yeah. time all the time, but it's out of fun. However, these guys do a really good job. They go to these classes. I don't think people realize how, how much training. Yeah, they go through training. That they're they're, they're running up and down fields <laughs> like football players. And learning the game. Yeah. They learn rules that the average person do not understand why this has done this and that, and they are analyzing all of those things. So now we have, it is not a score. They're bringing the ball back. It is a fumble, but is it fumble recovered by? Okay, it's after the half, so it's 12 minutes. So, so we're in the second quarter. With all of that, we weren't able. Now, now, it's first down and 10 for the Gardendale Rockets. So, 
they do recover. They do not advance the ball. So it's the, it's their ball. They just couldn't advance it. They could not okay. advance. Okay, so it must be called dead. There's the snap. He drops back. Here comes defense Ben. He spins back outside. Flag on the play. He throws it in the corner. Misses the ball. There is a flag in the holding. Gardendale moving back another five. So it will be second down and 15. First down again. First and 15 on the holding call against the Gardendale line. line. But you can see the defensive end. Uh, Woodlock's defense are putting pressure on them. <laughs> they're, they're, they're working, Gardendale. They are working them. They're working them to the point where they have to hold them. Gardell back at the line. They're set. Yeah, running backs in their power. Hands off. Over the middle, over the tackle. He goes and he runs. He gets about 12 yards back on that run. It is still, though, second down and about eight. Gardell's already back up to the line. There's a snap. He drops back. Here comes the defense. Toss out to the flat. He gets him. Pulls him down. The defense of Woodlawn is reacting very quickly to those to those uh, uh, passes out to the flat. I think the thing here, they're getting them on these third and long. And I think that's a start. But they have to capitalize on it right now. It's third down. And about nine. In motion, Gardendale. Defense makes the adjustment. Snap to him. Toss out to the flat. Does he get there? He hit. He's hit one time. He. Oh. He does not get he there. He does not get there. He does not get there. Not even close. Woodlawn defense stiffens up. It is now third down. Fourth down. Fourth down. Fourth down and about it looks seven. And they're staying on and the field. Yeah. <laughs> Fourth down. There's a snap to the Gardell quarterback. He drops back. He is hit. Quick toss. Oh, oh, no. He gets the first down. How did he get out of that? How did you see he do that? First down. Gardell with 10.24 left in the second. Unbelievable. So now you're, there's a snap guard Dale again, up the middle. I'm seeing the Woodlawn Colonel defenders, they're making contact in the, in the back, backfield, but they're not, they're not wrapping this. They're not wrapping up. You gotta do a better job of wrapping them up. They're getting there, but they're not finishing it Snapped all the way. By Gardell up the middle again, and there we go. We have a first down Boogie by Harris. the Gardell Rockets. What were you saying, Michael? They're, they're not finishing the wrap, you know, wrapping them up and, and bringing them down. They're not finishing it all the way. Gardell, there's a snap right there up the middle, and he scores over the tackle. Boogie Harris again getting back into the end zone. There we go with 9.30 left in the second. Gardell scores again as they trot out their field goal unit. I just thought that the defense by Woodlawn was starting to stiffen up. You can see that they're making contact with them in the backfield, but they just couldn't bring him down. Something about that fumble just took something away from them. They line up Gardendale. There's the snap. There's the kick. It is up, and it is good. It is now 27-6 on that field goal with 9.30 left. That field goal is brought to you by the ATF, the American Federation of Teachers. And you have Aflac, our guy, James W. Brown, 205-945-1130. Remember, Aflac gives you, give him a call for supplemental insurance to help pay out-of-pocket medical expenses. Your major medical insurance does not cover James W. Brown with Aflac. 28 to 6 with 9.30 left in the second. Woodlawn is down 6. They have 6. 
the Gardendale Rockets 27. Gardendale kicks off high and deep. Hits the turf, oh. rolls back into, don't take it out, just down it, just down it, just down it. There you go. In the uh, end zone, so at least you'll get it out to the uh, 20. What's your thoughts so far, Mr. Tart? Still didn't expect to see this many points on the board before the half. But I think this offense, Woodlawn's offense, should be well rested by now to come out and perfect the drive to at least put six on the board. Yeah. But one of those things when you're sitting there all the time, you stiffen up, you get out of your rhythm. Colonel's offense on the field, set up. Lone back in the backfield. There's the snap. Quick toss into the flat. Over toss. No good. Second down. On the 20 of, of the Colonels. 926 left. Gardendale 27. The Colonels of Woodlawn 6. As the offense goes ahead and gathers themselves and gets back ready for second down. There's the snap. He drops back. He tosses. He's going downfield. One on one. Is he there? Oh, just over the fingertips. Just over the fingertips. I believe that is number 20. I believe that's 24. That looks to be, yes, number 24. Dietrich Young. Wow, he just missed him on that one. Just missed him. 9.22 left in the second quarter. The Colonels of Woodlawn set up on their 20. As they drop back, ready to take the snap. There's the snap. He drops back, fakes. Bounces outside, gets a little pressure. He's does, does the smart thing, throws it out of bounds, throws it way up in the stadium. <laughs> there you go. He threw it to a fan. There you go, and she caught it. <laughs> First down. <laughs> Woodlawn. Fourth down, bringing out the punting unit. Couldn't get anything started on that drive. I think they should have gone back to what they were doing. Go just run the ball. Yeah, why would you just, change just, just it from run the ball. what you've been successful with tonight? Get back to the ground game. Yeah, if they haven't stopped, then keep running. Just keep going. I think sometimes we might get as offensive coordinators, <laughs> defensive coordinators, we get a little too fancy for ourselves. Hey, if that keep working, keep running it keep until running. they stop it. <laughs> A little miscommunication by the Colonels of Woodlawn. Moving back by. Fourth down as they get ready to punt. Snap. Punts it. It's at the... It's fielded at the 40. He picks it up. Oh, he oh. is hit. Oh, oh he goes he back. Up. He's back across the 50. He gets it. He is out. Oh. He draws back, so he's out. They are marking it at the, the 49. The 49 of Gardendale. He's lost some yards on that. He certainly he lost about what about 10 yards? About 10 yards. 9-13 in the second. Gardendale takes over at the there at the uh, Woodlawn at their 49. They set up as they start to. I wonder if they're going to keep this quick pace going. Snap, fakes it out to the flat again. There it is. Gardendale, he's met and caught. 
he gets about a gain of about three. A yeah, very short gain on that one. The defense of the Colonels come in very quickly as Gardell again rushes back and back. sets again. Lone back with the quarterback. There's a snap quickly. Looks like a uh, yeah, false start. False start on the wide receiver for the Rockets. As they come out and give us the official signal. There you go, motion. Gardell Rockets. And they move them back another five yards. It is now second down. And about 12. Gardell up to the line, ready to go. They take the snap. It is handoff up the middle. He bounces, and Ooh. he gets a first down and in some. There you go. Boogie Harris, man. He gets up the middle as they move the chains down the field. Again, we're seeing Woodlawn's defense make contact. Just about on every play. Every play. Gardendell back quickly to the line. There's the snap. He drops back. He throws down the middle. It is six caught. Number zero. Morgan Harris. Gardendale Rockets score again with 8.07 in the second. That hurry up off. Like you said, when it's, it's not wearing them down because they're they're getting through, they're making the contact. They just can't finish the tap. Yeah. I don't know what you do with that or, you know, uh, the kick is up, and our extra point is good. It is 34 to 6. Gardendale Rockets over the Woodlawn Colonels, and that extra point was brought to you by AFT, the American Federation of Teachers. And that extra point was also brought up by our guy, James W. Brown at AFLAC, the district sales coordinator. Give him a call at 205-945-1130. What do you have to say, James? <laughs> hey, hurry up often. Yeah. It is working well for Gardendale, not so for Wood. Not so much. Not so much. I, again, that defense, they're hanging with them. They're just not finishing. That's it. They're not finishing. And, oh, it, it's, it's hurting them. You know, and as you look at Gardell's really, a, I mean, uh, Woodlawn is really a young team as they kick off for Gardell. They field it. He bobbles oh. it, drops it at the 20, but he picks it up. He bobbles it, gets outside. He's trying to make a move. Oh, he takes a shot at 25. And a flag comes in again on the ball. We're going to see. What happens? Okay, as they sort it out. I mean, let's take a quick, as they slow it down a little bit. Let's see what that call was. It's obviously against Woodlawn as they march backwards. Did you pick up what the call was? I did not. Probably looks like either a holding or a little uh, block. But the Colonels of Woodlawn are set up first and ten. On there, looks about seven yard line. They take it, there it is, outside, running it. He tries to bounce outside. He gets outside, he makes a move. He is getting there. He makes really something out of nothing for about a six-yard game. And that was the run game. Getting back to that There's run game. The run game. <laughs> getting some progress there. Get 
Woodlawn now seems to be speeding up their offense. They're back up. It is second down. Second down and about four. Gets it to the outside again. Gardendale seems to be moving pretty quickly on that. I don't know why they keep trying to get away from it, <laughs> but they've been successful. And Gardendale was all over that quick pass. Like, they're all over it every time. The run game is, it seems like it's where it's at for Woodlawn, but they, they keep abandoning it and, and trying to make the pass game work. It is third down for the Colonels. Third and about eight. There's the snap. He drops back. He throws it over, over the head, right over the tips of his receiver. It's almost a repeat of the last drive where you're punting deep in your own territory. And you're not giving Gardendale much to work with. I mean, you're giving them a short field. So it's, you got to figure something out to, to not give Gardendale a short field. Yeah. Michael, you know, you hit that on the, on the head. You know, you've got to put your players in the best position to be successful. Uh, Woodlawn is not a bad-looking team on offense. I don't know why they keep get, getting away from, you know, what their strength is. It's pretty much there's the kick on their punt. It takes a Woodlawn bounce, gets up oh, there, did that it was touch close. it? That was close. And there's a flag. That looked like that touched him. I don't know. And what it's the, recovered by Woodlawn. I don't. Yeah, I don't know what the flag is on yes, that. Yes. Yeah. It is recovered by Woodlawn after the ball was bouncing. It was taking a Woodlawn bounce. Bounced up and hit the Gardendale uh, player. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe he threw the he threw the wrong flag and he went to throw the fumble. They're waving the flag off. That's Woodlawn's ball. Michael, good eagle eyes. You picked up on that. He threw the wrong thing. But he was on top of that play from the beginning. So now Woodlawn has the ball back at the 50. First down with 634 left in the second. As they, they line up, Woodlawn is ready to go. There's the snap. He drops back. Here comes trouble. Here he goes. Overthrows. Fans are yelling that there was pass interference. Uh, I think there was a miscommunication between the quarterback and the wide receiver. Yeah, that fan wasn't too happy about that. No, he, was not. he was not. Second down and 10 for the Woodlawn Colonels at their 50. They can still drive. Let's go down and let's see if we can get something going here. The Colonels of Woodlawn, again, they're not a bad-looking team. There's the snap. There's the handoff. Up the middle. He dances. He bounces outside. Mike Hill. Again, why would you get away from <laughs> Why would you get away from handing the ball off? You Mike Hill Jackson is getting it done. Feed him the ball. Feed him the ball. <laughs> Feed Let's line him up. the ball. Obviously, the offensive line loves this play as well. Lined up, snap. Gives it back to him again. They're finally listening to us. They <laughs> meet him right at the line. Okay, second down and 10. Hey, he's still getting somewhere. One yard is somewhere. <laughs> it is 540. <laughs> Left in the first first quarter, second, I mean second, second quarter rather, of the first half. Gardendale lines up and here it goes, fakes back, gets it out into the flat. Oh, he breaks, he runs. Nice, runs over Gardendale, defender for a first down. Nice move right there by number that 24. Dietrich Young. That was a nice move by Dietrich Young. Watch him get outside into the. Look at this play right here. Look he at the open it. space. He puts his foot down. Bam! There he goes right over him. What a play. What a good effort. He got into some open space. That's what you, I, 
you have to do that. They have the talent to do that. Open it up. There you go. First down for the Colonels. There they go with their run game again. They make a make a little headway. About three yards on that run. Michael Jackson. Four minutes and 33 seconds left in the first half, second quarter. It is now second down. Looks like they're trying to oh yeah trying to string something together here with the Colonels. As they line up. As they take the snap under pressure. He throws down in the corner. Is there a flag? There is a flag. Oh. Oh. It looks like they're going to get a pass interference hold on Gardendale. Pass interference hold against Gardendale as they move the ball down. They should get a 15-yard penalty. It'll be an automatic first down. You got to take those yards and first downs when you can. There you go. Now, what do you do now, Michael? Do you still do you start I, running it? I go back to the run. I, you just hand it off. If that's what's been getting you, you know, it looks like your offensive linemen like that play <laughs> because they're opening up the hole. They're making it happen. And they're making it happen. Gardendale is being pushed back. Now the Colonels, as they get into their huddle, it's like they're taking their time, but they're hush hustling to the line as they move down. First down. First and goal. First and goal. On the 10. About the 11. The Colonels line up. Shotgun. As you see, they're sitting back there. There's a snap. He hands it off. There he is. Fake. Oh, my goodness. He misses. <laughs> I don't know. That was a little miscommunication between the two. I thought it was open. Your thoughts? I, I thought the ball slipped out of his hands a little bit when he tried to throw it, but I, ugh. It is second down and goal for the Colonels. Snap, there's the handoff. Pass, quick pass over the middle. Six points by the Colonels. There you go. Nothing. No laundry on the field. Nothing. Good play. Six points. The Colonel score. No, no, no. He didn't. Oh, he dropped it. Yeah, he dropped it. How did you drop that? You put your hands on the ball. You got to catch it. Oh, my goodness. I <laughs> you put your hands on the ball. You have to catch it. That was surprising. I thought that was six. I thought that was six points. As they are back up at the line, the Colonels take the snap. He drops back. He's going into the corner. It's tossed again. Oh. And a flag, <laughs> flag on the play. It looks like it's going to be offensive interference with the inter Again, yes. That is the call. Oh, oh, I was going to say, he looked like he was pointing towards. That's not good. But now he's pointing, he's changing. It is against Gardendale. It is against Gardendale. The pass interference. So now they'll move that, what, half the distance? Half the distance, and it's first down. So now, with your, with your run on first you down. You run it. You run it. Do I'm not throw that. it. Do not throw it. Run it. Quarterback sneak. RPO. Do not throw it. You got your guys. To, your guys up front are loving to the run, they're opening up the holes. You've got a guy back there that can do it yeah, for you. He can you. do it. He's shown he can do it. Give it to him. He has met at the line, second down. It's second down for the Colonels. Down on about the five-yard line. Five. Got a, is it a flag? Was it face mask on Gardendale? Now they're going to move it even closer. 
Let's see what they get with three minutes and 44 seconds left in the second quarter. Gardendale is up 35 to six. Now, do you run it? I run it. I run it again, <laughs> I run yes. it. All day long. Come on, big boys up front. Let's dig in. All right, they're lined up. There's the snap. It's given to him. He's outside. He threw it. And it is <laughs> He threw it. <laughs> Maybe he just doesn't have any confidence right now. You've got to get those guys up front. This man, it's fourth down. I thought it was first down. Fourth? The marker says fourth. Everywhere else says third. They're calling it a The marker says fourth down. If it was a third down, I'm pretty sure. Gardendale, there's the snap. He throws it over. It's another and, and flag. Another flag. <laughs> it's another flag. <laughs> this is going to be a first down <laughs> inches away from the goal line. <laughs> We're giving Gardell. I mean, they're giving Woodhun the chance to score. They're giving it to him. Like, the they're putting you there. We got a pass interference again against Gardell. If you, this is at the two. First down at the two. The Colonels are set up. They're lined up. They call a timeout. It is a timeout called by the Colonels of Woodlawn with 3.34 left in the second quarter. And we're, since they're going to take a break, we are going to take one, too. We're going to toss it down to you guys in the truck. Scholar Athletes of the Week, sponsored by Traditions Chicken. Well, we are back live here at Colonel Stadium, Woodlawn High School, this beautiful brand new field on Friday night. Wonderful temperature happening here with three minutes and 34 seconds left in the second. Gardendale up 35 to six. However, you have the Woodlawn Colonels knocking at the door. They're there. They are there. First down, first and goal, We've had several back-to-back -back pass interferences called against the uh, Rockets of Gardendale. We're going to see what they have. Gardendale set up so they have him right there. It's fake. It's put. Oh, my he goodness. He drops it. Oh. How did. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow, dropped the ball, second and goal. Second down and goal for the Woodlawn Colonels. Uh, what, what do you have to say? It's three minutes and 30 seconds left in the second. I'm, I'm confused at what's going on. Wait, is it Gardendale's ball now? Hold up, it's second and goal. I thought it would be second and goal. I, I'm we missed something. <laughs> I, I, something I'm, is amiss because I'm, I'm we saw confused. a flag on the play. Gardendale has the ball. They're running it out of their own. They're tackled. What is he? Are they going to call it a safety? No, he is tackled. He's probably going to be called. He was out at the one. I thought with all the penalties, that would be a first down for Woodlawn. Maybe I missed that. I don't know. Not only did you miss it, <laughs> I missed it. The truck missed it. I'm confused. The people driving on the highway <laughs> missed it. The people watching missed it. And Gardendale has the ball. Garden ball, second down as they drop back in their own end zone. Under pressure, he tosses it. That intercept, oh. no, in his hands. And it is dropped by number 24. Dietrich Young. 
Dietrich Young. Put your hands on it. You're smart you enough. You got that it. high GPA. <laughs> and he drops back. Watch oh, this. How man. he drops back there and it hits him oh. right in the hands. He's in position. Come on, Mr. Young. <laughs> <laughs> he was in position. If he catches that, oh, I think he scores. He scores. Gardell lines up back in there. Position hands off. Over the tackle. He is met oh, at the line. What do we call this? They're saying, you know, he was yeah, stopped. Forward, forward progress. Forward progress. He stopped about the two. You're looking at a punt deep from your end zone. Fourth, so down. fourth down. Fourth down, Gardell coming out the punt with two minutes and 32 seconds in the second from their own end zone. I think you got to bring the house. You bring the house. You got to put pressure. I put one guy back. <laughs> you just got to You got to put one in, guy man. back. You got to go all in on it. There is a flag. It is called. Trying to sort it out. Let's see what the call is. Waved it off. Waving it off. Waving off the flag. They line up. Gardendale is at their two-yard line, four-yard line. So the snap is going to be deep into their own end zone. There's the snap. There's pressure. There's the kick. Let's it bounce. Gardendale gets down around there, and it dies right there at the 40 at the Woodlawn 40. With two minutes and 24 seconds left in the second, you have, it's 34 to six, Gardendale over the Woodlawn Colonels as the offense trots back out on the field. This has been a very, this has been some very interesting turn of events, I would say. Very much so. <laughs> we have another flag on the play. As we all start. Okay, as they we sorted out, okay, Woodlawn Colonels now, they're set up there at their 40. They drop back, there's the pass. Looks like it's going back. It almost looked like there was a flag on that play. Well, obviously, there was not. The officials were in position. I don't know if the receiver just slowed down, but it looked like all of a sudden he was running. And yeah, they just start jogging. Yeah. At the 45 of Woodlawn, second down with two minutes and 18 seconds left at Colonel Stadium. They're getting ready to drop back. Here we go. He drops back. He dances around there. He, oh, he's oh. caught in the backfield. Oh, that didn't work out very well. And the Colonels, as they go backwards. You know, right now, with two minutes and eight seconds left in the second quarter, 35 to six, Woodlawn is down. However, you've got a whole lot of stuff going on. I mean, with this brand new facility. Oh, man. So we have a lot of things going on here uh, right now, <laughs> literally. <laughs> <laughs> Up here, drop back. He tries to throw, throws yeah, out throws of it away. Throws out, but he was outside the tackle box, so he does not get a on the field. It's not a uh, uh, a grounding. But now we have up here with us, we have the principal joining us tonight.
from Woodlawn High School, from Woodlawn High School, Principal Davis, who is over here. Miss Davis, good to see you. Oh, there you go. I think we got your mic now. How you doing? Can you hear us now? I can hear you. There you go. We got you now, Miss Davis. You're doing a great job over here. You guys have a brand new, beautiful facility. Absolutely. We're very excited about it. What else do you guys have going on over here? Tell us what's going on over here. Well, we have a lot of great things going on. I'm sure that they've seen uh, the BCS Under the Lights video highlighting our early college. Uh, our Academy of Business and Finance, our CTE cosmetology program. And so we have a lot of wonderful things that our scholars are involved in. Well, that, that is so great. I mean, you know, when you always hear about, you know, Woodlawn, you hear about some of the great things, but I don't think people really get to see in here, you know, like we did the other today, we were able to see. What would you tell parents that are gonna be sending their kids from junior high coming to your school next year? What can they look for? I would say that they would be walking into a school full of rich history, um, that they're walking into an institution of learning where we are providing opportunities um, early for post-secondary education. Okay. Um, we're preparing kids for the workforce and where they will be really guided and nurtured in a very positive culture and climate. Yeah. We're have you been surprised about, I mean, I'm getting back to this football right here. Two, one minute and 30 seconds left in the second quarter. Uh, Ms. Davis, what is it that you want to do? When you leave here, I want, what is going to be your legacy when you leave here in 30 more years? Oh, goodness. It, won't be <laughs> it will not be 30, <laughs> 30 more years. Um, but my legacy should be, and I want it to be, that we were cultivating leaders. Uh, at Woodlawn through rigor, relevance, and relationships. That was that is what I want to, my legacy to be. Well, that is that is good. A minute, and we coming up on one minute in the second. You just saw a run. Woodlawn is starting to move the chains. They're back out here. It is now. I believe it is going to be a second down. And. It's Gardendale's ball, so they've turned it over. It is. What do you have to say to your young men and uh, your cheerleaders and all the stuff that you had out here today? They, they look fantastic. Great job. They're really great kids, and they're very talented, and they're very committed to what it is that they're doing. That is over the middle. Gardendale jumps. The defense stops him with a minute. Coming up on one minute as the clock continues to run in a second. I know got school it. is about academics, which it should be. Right. But how does it feel to have your own on-campus stadium right here at Woodland? Well, it's been a long time coming. And so this means a lot to the community, to the Woodlawn community. Um, it means a lot to our school. And as you can see, we have our fan base out here who is really excited about coming out weekly to support our team. So we're, we're very happy and very excited. Now we just want to win games. <laughs> There you go. Academics. Uh, Gardendale just runs down there in the corner and scores with the uh, with uh, 38 seconds left. As looks like they're going for two. They are going for two. The quick pitch. There it is, right there. Two more points for Gardendale. So 35 to six right now with 35 seconds left. Well, 41 to six with 35 seconds left in the second quarter as Gardendale. March down the. Well, maybe they did not. That was a touchdown. That was the touchdown, yeah. so they didn't call that the touchdown. So now they walk on the field goal unit, and it is be the kick is up, and it, it oh off the top, up the upright, and it goes through. However, it does go through. So that extra point here tonight with 35 seconds left. Here at Colonel Stadium with 42, 42 to 6, Gardell over Woodlawn. That extra point was brought to you by the ATF American Federation of Teachers, the AFT, and AFLAC, James W. Brown, the district sales coordinator. He has stuff to help you cover what your insurance doesn't. So give him a call at 205. 
945-1130. James W. Brown at Aflac. Reach out to him. Back to the live action, and we are up here with the pretty Miss Davis, the principal of Woodlawn High School, up here with us. So, now, uh, as the kickoff, we're looking at this. Miss Davis, as he walks up to turn, he gets a return, he turns the corner. He's Come on, let's go. go. He is going to yeah. score. <laughs> Principal Davis, what you think oh, about that touchdown sorry. run? No, 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 no. What did you think about yeah, that touchdown run? I'm super run? excited. I'm super excited. <laughs> Very proud. Very proud. I love the show that you guys give here when you score the light. Number three on that return. That looked like that was 100 yards. That was a 100-yard return, it looked like to me. If it wasn't, it was very close. <laughs> What a return. Michael, give a hand. Give a hand. Give a hand. Michael, give a hand. Want to make sure we pronounce those names correctly. They're going for two. Woodlawn goes for two. With 21 seconds left in the second. They are going to line it up. Are they going to try it out there? Go no, they are going to go, go for two. two. As they set up. There's the snap, he drops back. There's the pitch, and no good. So, after phenomenal return by Woodlawn with 21 seconds left in the second quarter. Excellent. Wow, Exc now that was exciting. That was very that was exciting. exciting. That, that, that was excitement. Much needed shot in the arm on that. Here you go, look at this, he turns the corner he can't even get, the kicker can't even get the angle on him. He is gone. He's saying, this is a track meet reading my name on the back of my jersey. And tell me what my number is. Trey. Good job on that Woodlawn. They've got to be proud of him. Now we're having, now Ms. Davis, now, what can scholars look forward to? We're getting an education here at Woodlawn. Well, we definitely want to make sure that our college leave college ready. Um, and again, I will highlight that um, we're preparing them for the workforce. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that they also have access to AP classes. So getting that college right. credit when they transition, they're ready. So when they come to, um, to high school, Wow. Okay, we'll get right back to you in just a second. That was a big kickoff. You saw that that was a big return by the Gardell Rockets getting back across the 50 of Woodlawn with 12 seconds left in the second. Looks like I think they're probably going to go ahead and take a knee and kill this. First down for the Gardell. No, they are dropping they're back. They're going to run a play. They are going to run a play. He drops back, gets pressure. He steps up. He tosses. Oh, yeah, broken complete. up. Broken up with four seconds left in the second quarter. Gardell is on the second down. Wow. Okay. Ms. Davis, look like, are they going to take another shot? They're going to take another shot. It looks like with four seconds left in the second, they're up 42 to, to 12. Whistles. Stop of play. a flag on the play. Flag on the play, Miss Davis. We really appreciate you coming up here to me. talk with us. I see you got that AKA thing on. Yes. Okay, so good. Yes, this is actually good. I was like, yes, yes. What would you expect? 
we really appreciate when our, our administrators come up and talk with us and let everyone know what's going on academically at the school's practice. Drops back, the pressure, he steps up in the hole, he throws it. That is picked off. It is picked off by Woodlawn. Oh, oh. Looks like the slam is like this. It is picked off. He brought it back out to the second, to the two yard line. Time has now expired. The end of the second quarter, Woodlawn. 12, the Gardendale Rockets, 42. Looked like that the, the Colonels were starting to see a little spark starting to come around there. You had the big return, the kick return come back. So let's see what these guys have coming out after halftime. I think even that interception right there to end the half can give you a little spark of momentum going into the second half. Yeah. So again, we've had the principal here at Woodlawn join us, uh, Miss Davis. We appreciate it. Thanks for joining us up here. We hope if we come back that you'll join us again. I will. Thank you for and having come me. come see us. We, we also it. appreciate her cheering on that touchdown oh. as well. <laughs> yeah, see, she brought, she, see, she came up here and brought, brought, brought him luck. Well, there I, you go. I went to Jackson State, so I'm extremely competitive. <laughs> oh, 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 Jackson State. Oh. The Jackson State. Oh, 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 well, I'm a gremlin guy myself. Oh, so, okay. you know, we're the real tiger. You know, you've ever seen a blue tiger? I never have. I remember. So, oh. yes. But, yeah, we, we love having you here. Thank so you. this whole thing up here is swack, swack love up That's here. Right. We love That's it. Right. That's we right. love it. We love it. So this is great. Thank great. you. All right, totally thanks for joining. It. Well, we have Gardendale High School about to go out on the field. We have the Woodlawn Colonels and the uh, who are down 12 to 42. It is been interesting these last couple of plays for the Woodlawn Colonels here at their stadium. Just phenomenal play, but their defense has been, they've been making the plays. Unfortunately, they just have not been stopping uh, the guys, you know, in the backfield where I thought there were going to be losses. They're getting there. They're getting in the backfield. They're, they're, they're forcing the quick throws as well, but they can't wrap up. They can't com complete the tackles, and that's big. Mm -hmm. Not completing those tackles turn into long games, which turn into scores. So they have to complete those tackles. They have to stop that, and they they got to force those turnovers, just like we saw even though it was just a, a throw-up ball to end the half. That still can spark that team. They can spark Woodlawn going into the second half. Yes. Absolutely, man. So, you know, this is what we have to do. You know, the halftime show that uh, we'll be looking at, that will be brought to you by the American, Feder the American Education Association. The Alabama Education Association is proud to support Birmingham Schools, school, City Schools. AEA is committed to advancing the cause of public education and believes every child deserves a quality education. AEA sincerely thanks all educators in attendance cheering for their teams. Enjoy the game and visit myaea.org to learn more. So we have to thank the AEA for what they do. So you have the, the band performances coming up. The Gardendale's band performance. What do you see the bright spots? It is 42 to 12. What are the bright spots that you've got, Michael? Man, that run game, is it, it's going. I mean, you, you look at the score and you might see like, oh, this is a blowout game. But I'm seeing a run game that looks great from Woodlawn. Mm -hmm. uh, if that passing game can get going, too. Mm -hmm. a everything has to get going. Everything has to, it has to click. The defense, they have to just tackle. That, yeah. That's number one. They just have to tackle. They're, yeah. they're, they're forcing the third and longs. They're getting there, but they just can't get out of the third and longs. They're forcing them. They can't get out of them. I say just tackle. Some kind of way, force the turnover. Force the quarterback to throw the ball quicker than he should. Force them. Get them to throw interceptions. You got to get something going on that on the defense, too. And then you yeah. give, get back to that running game that Michael Jackson was just breaking free on. So, 
it's a lot of keys there. They, they got to work as a complete unit. And they, they can put some points on the board. Well, I hear you. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and go to a break right now, and then we'll come back. So I think we're going to kick it to the truck. Let me make sure. So, I, so we'll let, turn it over to the truck and take a break. Two Dough Girls Pizzeria opened up shop in May 2023, taking over the former Lehman Brothers space on First Avenue North. The menu ranges from appetizers and salads to pizzas and pastas, to sandwiches and desserts. But you'll notice there's something familiar with the names of these dishes. The menu is an ode to hip hop, with every item paying homage to classic tracks. The name of the restaurant itself is a clever nod to a classic Outkast song, which it shares with one of the pizzas on the menu. Among the appetizers, the cheese sticks are a tribute to the Wu-Tang Clan. Cheese rules everything around me. Under pastas, you can choose from Lil Wayne with the six foot, seven foot pasta, or J. Cole with the Nobody's Perfect lasagna. If you're a fan of P. Diddy, perhaps you'll enjoy the All About the Benjamins salad. There's also a Build Your Own Pizza option, dubbed You Can Have Whatever You Like after T.I.'s hit single. And I'm here with one of the two dough girls, Anita Craig. Anita. Hello, how are you? Not, not bad, how, thanks for having us here. All right, well. Well, um, you are the baker and maker of this pie over here. Yes, Tell us about it. So this is the two dough girls and a Cadillac. It is our extreme meat lovers. It is the queen of all meat. It comes with pepperoni, ground beef, Italian sausage, a sweet copa, and a salami. And right. it is just delicious. Well, <laughs> well I'm gonna take a, a piece of this American pie and take a bite out. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, that cheese pool. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. I mean, Miss Craig. Oh, this is so fresh and so clean. <laughs> this has been good eats. Bums over Baghdad. <laughs> I had to get that. Two former Woodlawn High School football legends. This is a great field, man. This is real nice. Oh, I love it. I love it. Cedric Blair and Wayman Benefield returned to their alma mater this week to check out the school's brand new stadium. But I like what I see, something that we can be proud of. You know, I wish we'd have had this maybe about 25, 30 years ago, but we don't. We didn't have this here at Woodlawn. Blair and Benefield played on the same football team at Woodlawn in the 70s. Benefield was a quarterback and Blair was an offensive lineman. This used to be the practice field, our football field. It was a field here, plus the bleacher was over here. It was higher, and I remember we had to run up and down those stadiums. It was tough. It prepared you to, uh, to go out there and play. This photo shows Woodlawn's football team standing on the school's old field in the 30s. Woodlawn's football games weren't played on campus during Blair and Benefield's era, they played their games either at Lawson Field or the historic Legion Field. It's important to mention, Woodlawn has produced some top-tier athletes during its 107-year history. Dr. Greg Carr, Derrick McConaughey, he went to play with the uh, Raiders. Tony Nathan, Howard Ross, I mean, I can just go on Greg Carr, that was just... Uh, and then after us, Dansby, Chris Davis. The late Florida State head football coach, Bobby Bowden, also a former Woodlawn football standout. Meanwhile, both Blair and Benefield hope current players take pride in the new investments and the community continues to support the Colonels. I'm Fred Davenport with BCS Media. Second period is Angel Jones' favorite class at Woodlawn High School in Birmingham. It's when she's studying cosmetology a class she takes seriously. I personally like this cosmetology class because she makes it fun. Angel comes from a family full of cosmetologists, and she hopes she can keep the legacy going. It's not just I just want to do it because it's easy. I honestly enjoy 
doing cosmetology. My family and friends let me practice on them, you know, just doing a little bun or a couple of braids. Anna Vanderbilt is the instructor for this cosmetology class. Okay, y'all know this, the pro sections, right? She's new to Woodlawn and Birmingham City Schools. The opportunity to work with kids attracted Vanderbilt to Woodlawn. I was at a bona fide cosmetology school for eight years and I toured a high school and I was like, I think these kids would benefit more from me. Vanderbilt's goal is to prepare these scholars to pass exams in order to become licensed hairstylists. In addition to teaching the proper way to do hair, Vanderbilt is giving them knowledge about the business side of cosmetology. We went over the business skills on how to get a job and whether you want to rent a booth or you want to do commission or salary or different things like that, I told them all about how to get a job, what to do when they get the job, how to act on the job, you know, how to be a entrepreneur, all that. They learn all that here already. Jemiah Long plans to pursue another career path after high school, but she says she's learning valuable skills in the class that she can take with her. Something I have learned is how to properly wash hair, trimming is well, also, we've learned about dyeing the hair. A lot, of, a lot of things that I thought was appropriate for dyeing hair, I was wrong, and she taught us that. Vanderbilt has other big tasks, such as preparing her scholars for citywide and state competitions. The students also get to participate in hair shows. I'm Fred Davenport with BCS Media. Hello, I'm Fred Davenport. There are many career options that are available to the students here at Woodlawn High School. Joining us today is Mrs. Dorothy Gibson. She is over the Career Technical Education Program here at Woodlawn. So first off, talk about the different programs that are available. Okay, here at Woodlawn High School, our students have the opportunity uh, to, to uh, matriculate through different programs here. We have uh, computer science, cosmetology, finance, business market education, graphic arts, as well as JROTC. With those programs, they're able to earn industry-recognized credential. Uh, with the cosmetology and finance and business programs, they can earn a customer service credential. Also, with the business and finance programs, they can earn a credential in Microsoft Office Suites. That includes Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. With the computer science program, they're able to earn a certification in Python. Uh, our graphic arts, we do Adobe certification. And of course, with JRTC, they have the opportunity to earn a leadership degree as well as earn additional placement if they decide to join the military upon graduation. You know, one thing I learned about the young people here at Woodlawn is, you know, they want to be entrepreneurs. Yes. They want to own their own businesses and yes. make lots of money. Yes. And you all are giving them an early start, uh, early education on how to do that. Yes, we are. We have the Academy of Business and Finance here that, that works hand in hand with the CT department. And with us, that collaboration, the students are able to display their skills, the entrepreneur talents. So for instance, we have a student here who does balloon arches. We use him a lot for our different events. We have a, a student who was uh, previously here who came through uh, Woodland High School. He's a photographer now. We have a student who's a manager at Jones Valley Teaching Farm out there. So they each have uh, the option where well, they are living their dream. They're managing different businesses, using the entrepreneurial skills gained here to uh, advance their money mm -hmm. as well as their skill set. And uh, outside of the uh, different programs, you are back live here at the Woodlawn Colonel's Field. Brand new field. Brand new. Me and my man, Michael, as the Woodlawn Colonel's marching band starts to take the field and put on their performance. We have, it is now 42 to 12. The Colonels are down uh, 42 to 12. What do you have to say as we get ready to watch them put on their show? Michael, we're going to have to tackle <laughs> they, they have to make tackles. I think it starts there. I mean, we saw the run game. We saw what they can do with that. But I, I got to go back to, like I said in the pre-show, you got to get the defense going. They have to slow down this hurry-up offense. And that, that's been a little trouble so far. But that defense has to get going. They're, they're getting there, but they're not getting enough. I get you. I get you. Yes. So now, let's take a look. We're going to watch some entertainment from the Woodlawn Colonels band as they get down on their new feet. No. No.
here against the Gardendale uh, Rockets. But we've got stuff going on. I think they could be something a little better coming up. So, you know, this, there we go. D you know, so we'll, we'll start. But we've got to say thanks to some of all of our folks that have helped make this happen. Yes, sir. You know, you know the guys down in the truck that do a fantastic job of doing all these, these, these promotions. You got Fred Davenport and all the guys that run around all week putting together all these, these uh, 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 packages or stories about what we're doing fantastically in the Birmingham school system. So hats off to those guys. But we like to say. Thank you, the strategic plan. This is your opportunity as parents and community stakeholders. Give us feedback on the direction of our schools during the strategic plan. Make sure you can go ahead and scan and take the survey. Now, the Dialysis Awareness Week. This is the Dialysis Awareness Month and also Breast Cancer Awareness and Domestic Violence Awareness dyslexia rather I'm just reading everything else but what I'm supposed to be reading the dyslexia uh, domestic violence awareness month and you've got the Magic City marching band festival on Fe on Sunday October the 27th on 22nd tickets are only ten dollars purchase them now at gofan.co we also have coming up is the national Principals Appreciation Month. We are proud of our leaders in our BCS schools. We have to say thank you to our principals for all they do, and they do such a great job. Now, next week, the game of the week will be the Parker Thundering Herd taking on the Huffman Vikings on October Thursday, October the 26th. And that will be on BCS Thursday night Game of the week, or as they would say, BCS, under the, light. under the light. There we go. Now, what's coming up? You've got Courtside High School Hoops Edition. It is that time of the year. Last week was Monday was the day that they could go ahead and officially throughout the state of Alabama begin high school practice for basketball. And already people are asking, when was Thursday under the lights coming up? <laughs> <I'm like, laughs> That's the voice they used because they haven't changed yet. Hey, 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 it coming? So, we're coming. We are coming. Now, your business can also become a sponsor as we showcase our student athletes. Sponsorship segments are available to be featured for more information, contact Nikki Seaborn today at csseaborn at bhm.k12.al.us. So you can be a sponsor and part of this fantastic thing that we're doing here with the Birmingham School System and BCS Under the Lights and BCS Hardwood. Also brought to you by the American Federation of Teachers who are out supporting those educators along with you have with the ATF you have obviously our guy the athlete James W. Brown district sales coordinator you can reach him at 205 945 1130 athlete James W. Brown so and again we have our strategic plan for all of you parents, please, this is your opportunity as parents to come through and uh, the community stakeholders and give us feedback. And to the Scholar Athletes of the Week, TC, Traditions Chicken, which is some good chicken. That's some good They're chicken. great sponsor. Get by there. Get your stuff catered. Have, you will be, they are a big sponsor of what we do. And T, TC, Traditions Chicken, Scholar of the week is Dietrich Young. He has a GPA of 3.9. And our other scholar athlete is your guy. Michael Jackson. There you go. Give him the ball. Give him the ball because <laughs> you've been giving him the books because he has a 3.2. So give him the ball. He has been an outstanding player and we have not only good on the field but these guys also tear it up 
in the classroom as well. We are back to live action here at the Woodlawn Colonel's Field, and it is 42 to 12. We are going to kick off the top of the third as the Woodlawn Colonels are set up, and they have kicked it off, and it is deep. It is recovered by the Rockets of Gardendale. He, he stopped. He didn't get anywhere. He didn't get anywhere. I thought he was going to cut it up, but no, he went. He went uh, vertically and uh, horizontally, and that's where he goes and gets stopped right there. Maybe this is where we can get a change on what's happening here uh, in this game. What do you think, Mike? Hopefully that defense got some rest. It got, to, got to take a little break because you know Gardendale is going to come right back out there with that hurry-up offense. So hopefully we can wrap up. We can get some tackles and we can get a couple of stops and, and hopefully force a punt. That's the start. That will be a start, but we have Gardell. We saw the last uh, half how quickly Gardell comes in and loads up. They're already loaded up. They're in the shotgun. With 11.54 left, and we have a whistle. Can't even get a playoff without a flag first. And it is illegal motion against the Rockets of Gardendale, who are being marched backwards. Like you said earlier, maybe sometimes you move a little too quickly. <laughs> there's the snap, there's the pass. Here comes the pressure from the backside. He gets it off. It is tipped out of the hands of the Woodlawn player. But I thought the safety was going to come up, and it was a yeah. tip drill. I thought that he could have come up, and if he would have given up his body a little bit, may have been able to make a play. Maybe he jumped just up. And did early. <laughs> Just so now Cornell back it up the side. Gives it up the middle. There he goes. Over the tackle. It is now second down. And he runs for about seven or yards or so. And it is coming up on third down for the Rockets of Gardendale. As they're trying to get set. They're already set. There he is in the backfield. There's the snap. Gives it to him again over the same play. He goes up the side. Oh, over the tackle. Yeah. He is hit, but we have now, we have a Woodlawn player. He looks a little shaken up, but he gets back up. It is first down. Gardendale back quickly to the line. Ready to reload as the defense tries to get set. They set the ball. <laughs> they hit it. The chains aren't even set yet. And they're ready to go. They're moving so fast. Illegal substitution. Now, this is the second time they've been caught with the illegal substitution for the Colonels of, Wood, of Woodlawn because they, they, they move so quickly that if you're trying to make an adjustment, they that you can't. Can. Yeah, they make it so hard that you can't. Woodlawn gets back, drops back. He drops back deep, throws it downfield. He's in position, and it's caught. Touchdown. Flag on the play. It's going to be pass interference, or is it going to be offensive pass interference Look against like number 13? Logan Fitzgerald. Looks like a push off the beat, but we, we will see. I think it was. I think you got it. Yeah, 13 is out there. He's complaining. He's protesting. <laughs> As he's still holding the ball. <laughs> As they march in the opposite direction. I thought the Woodlawn defender was in position. What do you think? He was in position until he got pushed out of it. So, I mean, that's the reason why that, that, that play is coming back. As they march backwards, Gardendale reloads real quickly. They are ready to go. Here we go, there's the, and he is out. Gardendale back quickly with their reload, they're doing that. They are getting back to the line so fast. But the defense is back. I think they've made the adjustment. Oh, he's hit. He's hit. Nice hit by like number four for Woodlawn who came up fair really strong 
and strung him out. But Gardendale is up in position again. Looking at that third and long. You got to have those third and longs and get out of them. He drops back. He's in the pocket. He drops back. He throws. He connects. Did First he down. It? Yes. First down for Gardendale. As Gardendale takes these chains, the Gardendale offense runs to the line to looking set up. Looking at seconds of getting back to that line and, and, and going. There's the snap. Gardendale takes it. running play off tackle. He jumps upside. He bounces outside. He gets around. He's at the 10. He's at the 10. He's at the 5. He's in for the score. Does he they, get they, it? And a flag on the play. Maybe a late hit out of bounds. No ruling against yet. Against Woodlawn. Number six. But it looks like it's good. Yes, it is a personal foul. Against Woodlawn hitting hitting the running back out of bounds. He was clearly in for a touchdown. That's frustration. It looked like they got him out at the three yard line. Winner set That's, up for their Oh, it is a touchdown. Goal. I'm Six, sorry. Yeah. So they're set up for the extra point as the officials discuss what is happening. It is unsportsman against Woodlawn. Okay, so now we get that. It was unsportsman conduct against Woodlawn and Gardendale sets up after that touchdown run. And here's the snap. The kick is up. It is good. So, what do you have to say, Michael? How quickly is that one going? That, that's very quick. Like, oh. <laughs> They're frustrating the defense is, is what's going on right now. Well, that was brought to you by, that extra point was brought to you by the American Federation of Teachers, the ATF, and by our man at AFLAC, James W. Brown, nine, what is that? Okay, 9.32 left. But James W. Brown, he is our AFLAC guy. Give him a call at 205-945-1130. AFLAC, this, he's the district sales coordinator. He can make it happen for you, and we appreciate all you guys as our extra point sponsors. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Already again. We have the kickoff coming on the end of it where Gardendale is lined up as the officials. Sometimes I think they might be moving on to the <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, I mean, we're looking up. I'm looking down. You're looking down. We're looking up. They're all over the place. <laughs> they do a good job. We're just giving you the business, guys. We're giving you the business because we love you. We know a couple of you guys. You guys do a great job out there. Trying to get you out there, man. <laughs> I'll think about that one. Woodlawn sure. sets sure. up. They sure kick. It. It's deep. He kicks it out of the end zone. No return. There comes a personal oh, flag. Another flag. I just saw that by the Gardendale player. He just flat. The Woodlawn player who didn't seem that he was paying attention because the play was over and he continued. The Gardendale player continued to run through that player uh, and that's a flag. I believe that's going to be a personal foul against Gardell. Personal foul. Attack on 15. That. And there you go. 15 yards on to the 20 that would be uh, where the ball would be coming out after the uh, uh, touchback. So they're starting to march it off. The 15 yards. They move the chains. It is 9.32 left in the third. 49 to 12, Gardendale over the Colonels of Woodlawn here at Woodlawn Stadium. Or is it Colonel Stadium? Or does it matter? <laughs> it is Colonel Stadium. I like Colonel Stadium. Colonel Stadium. We're going we're gonna to call it Colonel Stadium. There we go. Woodlawn is set up. He's dropped back and to take the snap as they get back. Maybe they can get back to their offensive run. They do the pitch. He's trying to cut upside, can't get in, can't turn the corner, stop for no gain. Matter of fact, looks like a loss of two. Number 10, 
for Garden for Woodlawn. Who had gotten the pitch? Karen Lewis. Woodlawn back to the line, set up with nine minutes left in the third. Defense is set, he's back again, he's set up with loss of two. He drops, he rolls, he dance. Oh, can oh. he get around? Oh, I thought he was going to be able to get out there. Nothing doing. He gets wrapped up, brought down by the Rockets defense. Colonel's definitely moving in the wrong direction. Yes, yes, they are. Yes, they are. Third down. It is now third down and about 14 yards. About third and 16, rather on that play. Third down with eight minutes and 22 seconds left in the third. Woodlawn is set up. As they communicate with each other, they've got their trips out on the right side. He's going deep. He's going down. Is he stepped it? No, nowhere. He was trying to hit his receiver, number 10, but he wasn't able to catch up with him, and they weren't able to connect. That is, let's see, number 10, that was uh, Karan Lewis, who he was trying to connect with as the defensive punting unit comes on for Woodlawn. Fourth down, eight minutes and five seconds left in the third quarter. As you can see, it's 49 to 12, Gardendale's way. As the Woodlawn Colonels get set to punt it, maybe they can get a good punt, get something going again. Maybe they can get they, a. They need a great bounce on it. Need a great bounce. They need a great bounce. Good kick. I think that's one of the better kicks. Fair catch by Gardendale. Catches it just south of the 50 yard line. So now Gardendale offense trots back out on the field. Gardendale is ready to get back at it. Here comes the defense for Woodlawn. They look like they're ready to get at it now. They're getting the signals and the calls. Here comes the offensive unit trotting on for Gardendale. I gotta wonder if this is going to keep going with the hurry up. We will see. Hand off to up the middle, number three. Hardy rips off about nine yards on the first down. Second down in about eight, rather. Oh, yeah, they're ready to snap. Gardell gets it. They're setting up. They roll out to his left. He stops back in the pocket. He doesn't see anything. He throws it over the middle. He throws it to his receiver for a first down who catches it and drops down before he takes a blow. Gardell quickly to the line again, set up. There's the snap. Quick out to the flat. Again. Here we go. Looks like a gain of about seven. And they're going. It's no slowdown in them. They're, they are going. No slowdown. You're absolutely right. Already back up to the line. The offensive line is set. There's a snap. There's the handoff over up the middle. He dances. He moves. He goes. Oh, wow. it, it is a touchdown for Gardendale. Up the middle. It is 55 to 12 at this point as they're going to march on the extra point unit. You have seven minutes and two seconds. That was literally about a 40 second march. <laughs> Easily. 40 seconds off the clock. Gardendale is not letting off the gas pedal. <clears throat> as the offensive unit, as the, well, the uh, kicking unit comes on, PAT. They are set up, they are lined up. There's the snap and the kick is up and it is good. It is now 56-12 with seven minutes and two seconds left in the third quarter. What do you got, Mr. Tart? I don't know what else to say. <laughs> what else? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what else to say. This one has gotten out of hand. Oh. 
and they're still running the hurry up. So it's, they know the defense hasn't adjusted to it. They haven't caught on. They can't keep up. So, I mean, they're, they're just sticking to their bread and butter, and then it, it's working, continuously working for Gardendale, and nothing has seemed to work for, Wood, for uh, Woodlawn. I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, you can't hurry up. It doesn't seem like they're coordinated right now with their offensive game. They got away from their running game. I don't. I think they've been shaken before. You know, I thought they had a little something ready to tank to come back after halftime. It looked like, uh, but the coaches, I think, have to call and use the guy that they had. You know, I thought that they were very effective uh, for uh, with their running game. Gardell kicks off. There's a retrieve by Woodlawn. They catch it up the middle. He comes up. He gets hit, but a nice return a little bit to the 26-yard line. You got to find something out of this drive, <laughs> even if it's a field goal. You got to find something. And what do you look for? What, what do you I, say? When you say you got to find gotta something, find what do you look something. for? I, you got to mix it up. Uh, the run the pass, reverse, trick plays, whatever. You, you got to find something, and you just don't want to lose your players. Yeah, it, it's 56 to 12, but you still don't want to lose your players in this. Yeah. Now, that's when, you, you know, most people don't realize, I think, that only see when you've got these young men out here, this is where you coach. Mm -hmm. This is coaching right here. To keep them engaged, try to keep them motivated to perform and execute, keep them together. So that, that, that's very hard to do when you're down, but like you said, this is where the real coaching comes in, where you're keeping your guys up even though you're getting beat up on the field. It's keeping their minds in it, keeping their heads in it, running the right routes, running the right plays, and trying to find that small nugget of hope that you can still move forward with it. Yeah. It is 6.55 left in the third. There's the snap. Woodlone takes it. He goes up the middle, but he's met and thrown down behind the line of scrimmage. So we have, it is now second down and about, is it 10? So they're going to say that he had his momentum, got to the line of scrimmage, but he was thrown backwards. Nope, they're saying he lost yardage. So he looked like he they lost, lost about. A couple of yards. Yeah. Looked like a loss of two. 6.32 in the third. Woodlawn sets it up. They get here. They drop back. He tries to throw it out into the flat. Not successful. Nothing going there. Now, you know, you had guys that came here like Tony Nate. Mm -hmm. And these guys, I mean, you know, the history of Woodlawn, I think a lot, you know, uh, I wonder how much they, the guys, the younger guys here, know on the, the shoulders that they're standing. I don't know. Hopefully they're being taught that. You know, hopefully they're they're, right. they're getting that. Hopefully it's some pictures up in their locker room that they see of that. And, you know, I I would hope that it's somewhere around the school, around the locker room in the field house about Tony Nathan and what he has done for this school. Yeah. Woodlawn tries. He gets back. He gets uh, thrown down. It's helped up, showed some good sportsmanship by Gardendale. Woodlawn trots out their punting team. But, yeah, you know, you have guys that have been here. Uh, you know, we read earlier all the guys that, that have come come through Gardendale, I mean Gardendale, that have come through <laughs> Woodlawn. the uh, uh, Woodlawn that, you know, you've got guys like, you know, Bobby Bound that came through mm -hmm. here. you got... You know, Dansbury, you got all those guys, you know, and we're not talking about 50 years ago. These oh, no, guys, he's talking some recent guys. Recent guys, yeah. Woodlawn punts, it takes a Gardendale, it takes a Woodlawn roll, it gets out of balance at the 30, looks like the 30. Close to the 35. 35? What is, is it 35? as Gardendale trots back out. So they're not taking their foot off the pedal at all. First string quarterback still out there. Phil Mark Beeson, he's coming back out there. Yeah. First string guy still left in, still in it. by the quarter <laughs> by the head coaches over at uh, Gardendale. 
still running their thing, so he's going to try to run this thing up probably as high as he possibly can. Flags on the play. Might be an offside. I didn't see what the call was. It's going against Woodlawn. They're marching off five. Now, even though you keep your guys out there in the backfield, they're going to take the snap. With the score being 56-12, you still have your starting offensive unit out there. You're still keeping the gas pressed to the pedal to the metal. And they're airing it out, too. And they're still throwing, so he's still trying to go ahead and score. Here's the thing about what, you know, I don't understand about some coaches. You got the game is clearly in hand. <laughs> you still got your starting quarterback, your starting units out there. Now, what happens if somebody, and hopefully it doesn't, but we've seen this happen. Oh, yeah. It yeah. can backfire on you that you don't get your guys out of there. This game is clearly in hand. You're up by 44 points. Like, what, what more do we need to see from your starting quarterback? There you go. Over the middle, pass complete. Gardale. Jones. Back quick to the line, quick the quick pitch, quick pass, back to the big tight end. And it's still going fast too. That's the other thing. They're they're not slowing it down at all. Yeah. Woodlawn, 17 yard line. Quick pitch. Is it to the outside? First down. Oh, that's a very late flag. Very, very that late That was flag. very late. Thrown out of bounds. Yeah. You know, guys are going to start getting chippy when oh, you start oh doing yeah. things like this. And oh, now yeah. you're trying to run up the score. You know, this thing about trying to embarrass other teams. Yeah. But, you know, the football Oh, it's on Gardendale. Oh, it's going against Garland. Uh, Unsportsmanlike. You know, the thing about that, when coaches do this, I've never liked it, and I've always been very verbal about it. You just be ready to take it when you give it. Just oh, yeah. be ready, you oh, know, yeah. as you give it, you make sure, you know, you're able to take it. It's, two, yeah, it's two sides of that coin. Yes, it is. So, you know, the athletic gods, you want to say, are fickle about that. So Gardell immediately back up to the line, keeping their pedal to the metal. They're going back. Snap, hand off the middle. Up the middle. There he goes. Still driving. Second down. Third down. And probably about, as we can see, as they hustle back to the line, third down and about eight. He's a quick pitch. First to the outside, he's grabbed. Gardell brought down number Should be one. Short, fourth down, but I don't think that's gonna phase Gardell at all. Yeah. So it's fourth down. Gardell trots out there. Get their place kicker. As they set up for three points. Kick is up. And it is good. It's good. It is good. That's about what? A 30, 35 yarder? 30 yard kick with 2 minutes and 37 seconds left. 50, 59 to 12. The Gardell Rockets over the Woodlawn Curves. That extra.
Extra Point was brought to you by the American Federation of Teachers, the ATF, the American Federation of Teachers, and brought to you by our guys, James W. Brown at Athlete. Give him a call, 205-945-1130, Athlete. So we're back to fill the play with two minutes and 37 seconds left in the third, 59 to 12 by Gardendale. Number two, Mikael Jackson. Well, what do you what do you get out of this? I, I don't. I, at this point with Woodland, I don't even know if Woodland should throw in their younger players and just let them have at it. Just get some reps in. Okay, I mean, there this, you go. this game is well out of hand. I mean, just keep doing what you do in practice. I mean, it, it becomes practice at this point. Yeah. You know, how do you keep these guys motivated? Again, like I said, this is where coaching comes into play to try to keep these oh, yeah. guys engaged. Oh, yeah. It is clearly with two minutes and 37 Good seconds job. left in the third, and it's 59-12. You know, your guys are just, uh, you know, Gardell, you know, hats off to them. They oh, yeah. they came out, they clicked. <laughs> they played. They came out and they clicked. You know, their offense came out, they executed what they said they wanted to do. They did the hurry up offense. They did. They did it. And they're they still doing it. it. They put up quick 21 points in the first quarter. Oh, they, 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 did. they set yeah. the tone. Yeah, they did. They did. But, you know, some of the bright spots for Woodlawn, there were a few. Uh, I thought they got away from their running game a little too early. Oh, yeah. I thought that they had guys. Uh, there's a flag on the play. They're marching. The Rockets backwards. Woodlawn advances. Are they going to re-kick? Looks, looks like, like they're going to yeah, re-kick. Like we're going to have a re-kick. With two minutes. 37 seconds left in third. I just think if a couple of tackles were made on a couple of drives, I mean, you could possibly be looking at a, a different game. I mean, uh, yeah, talk about that. We, we saw some of that. We, we, we saw a lot of that. I mean, they were getting in. They were forcing the quarterback to step up and make those throws. Uh, even on third and long, man, they were getting in there on a couple of plays. They were held. They were getting in there, and also when they got in, they were close to wrapping up, but they just couldn't complete those tackles, and I think that hurt them a lot. Kickoff, that was a re-kick. It is now fielded by Woodlawn. He gets up to the 30. He comes out. He's taken down back the approximately, no, he doesn't get quite to the 30. As they come off. The Woodlawn Colonels offense getting ready to take the field with two minutes and 21 seconds left in the third. Like you said, this is where the coaching comes in. This is where you got to keep them focused. You got to keep them there. You got to keep their attention. I know it's hard, but you still have to keep their attention right now. First and 10 for the Colonels with two minutes and 31 seconds left in the third. As they trot out, you've got Trey's on the... No, no, you don't. I thought that was... No, this... Yeah, they do. Trey's the right to side. the right. Snap is low. He falls down. He is down. Oh, down. Low snap. Is that a sign of mental fatigue? Uh, it is. That is. We, we haven't seen that all night. It's probably not the best time to start seeing that. Let's see if the offense can go ahead and at least get some sort of spark to go here with two minutes. It's still counting down two minutes in the third. There's the snap with Lon. He bounces outside. He gets down. He's under pressure. He's brought down in the backfield. Yeah, they've just been moving backwards on their last couple of drives. They're just moving in the wrong direction. Yeah.
But Woodlawn, you know, what I will say after speaking with those guys, I was addressing that a little earlier, you have a bunch of young guys that are on this team that he is working with. And uh, if he keeps working with them, those guys will be there. You know, you've got Lewis, you've got Brock, you've got, uh, you know, Young, who we're talking about, Hampton, Jackson. These guys are sophomore, junior, sophomore, sophomore, sophomore. You know, Mikael Jackson is a sophomore, the guy who we like. He's a sophomore. Yeah, you don't have too many seniors on this team. He doesn't I have. Mean, it's, it's a no? very young team that he's going to have a bunch of guys coming back next year. A bunch of guys. So, you know, when you beat up on a team like this, you know, when guys come back, they're going to remember oh, you. Oh, yeah, they're going to remember They're going to remember you. So it's going to be, you know, with a minute and eight seconds left in the third. Yeah, you better believe they're going to want to return that favor. So there's a snap. He's outside. He's trying to throw. It's way outside. Just not connecting. Just not, you know, right now you can see the youth of these young guys, but they'll be juniors next year. They're getting, you know, one of the things you can say is that they're getting the experience. Oh, yeah. And they're getting the, the experience at the varsity level. They're playing good teams, so they know what they have to do, what's expected of them in the offseason to prepare. Because, you know, practice and, and in-game reps are two different things. You're, you're yes. actually in the game. You see it happen. It's, it's right there. You know, you may practice a little different or, or the players may seem different on the field, but the in-game reps that they're getting, it, it's going to be very helpful for them building on next season. With long punts, fair catch by the Rockets. Who we'll catch it right at the their 40... What you call that, 40... 41? 41, 41, yes. 41, 42, 41 yard line. Rockets try out the offense. All right, they bring in a new quarterback. Okay, now got new. So they got that. Uh, but still, oh, oh, what a hit! They jump right up, run the same thing. Offense yeah. still there. Might not seem like much, but that was a got hit. the younger guys now in there. Uh, this looks more like, yes, yeah, these are the younger guys for Gardendell Tuck. It's a quarterback keeper right off tackle. He's run out of bounds. Those guys are getting some in-game reps as well. There's the clock runs with 20 seconds left in the third. Clock stops after going out of bounds. First down. This is uh, just a beautiful stadium. I still can't go around beautiful stadium. And they really did a good job on this as the clock starts to run again. In the third, 20 seconds. Quarterback keeper up the middle. Falls for about a yard. Nine seconds as they're going to go ahead and wrap it. We'll be done with the uh, fourth quarter. wrap it up for that. So, what we're going to do now at the end of this fourth quarter, so we'll just go ahead and we're going to take it down to the truck as we take a break for going into the fourth quarter. Age Pals looks to encourage reading outside of the classroom and inside of our homes by at least 15 minutes, three days per week. Now, in order to help our young students succeed, we need total commitment across the board. That's parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, mentors, and so many more. So join us. Join us in sharing the love of reading with our kids. To learn more or to volunteer to read 
with our students. Please visit behamufirst.org. That's behamufirst.org. Or at 205-320-0879. Listen, thanks to all of you for being Page Pals. All right, we are back to the action here in the fourth quarter here at Colonel Stadium, Woodlawn's brand new stadium with 11.42 and the clock is running. It is 59-12. The, the Rockets have it. They have their second team in. He has stopped, ran off tackle, and it is stopped. As the Rockets move, we have somebody who's hobbling for Woodlawn. He's going to be okay. Just seems like somebody stepped on that bunion. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to play through it on this play. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's going to play through it. It is going to be fourth down for the Rockets. Fourth and about, I would say about the 13. Here you go. He dips up, quarterback keeper, he keeps it, and he is stopped. He did not get that. He does not get it. It is turned over on downs by the Rockets to Woodlawn who will get the ball on there. It looks like they're 30. Yeah, they'll be on a uh, 25. Been on the 25, okay. As they move around. The offensive unit for Woodlawn comes onto the field. Defensive unit you can see coming on for the Rockets. The Colonel still have their guys in there at 10 minutes and 30 seconds left. It is 59 to 12 in the fourth quarter. We are in the fourth. Right. Colonels line up to take the snap. There it is, the handoff up the middle. He dances, but he's pulled back, met at the line for a gain of zero. As the clock continues to run here in the fourth. 10 minutes. Well, 9.59. It is now second down. And about 8. The Colonels line up. Take the snap. He drops back. He's trying to throw. He throws deep. He's looking for somebody down there. He's, He's in got there. Him. He catches it. Nice catch. Number 10. Karan Lewis. There we go. Nice catch by Karan Lewis as he pulls that in. Look how he pulls that in and gives you the signal for the first down. That's a great catch. Look, those guys, great catch. That's They're still catch. playing football. They rush to the line. The Colonels rush to the line. They set up. Those are the type reps you need in a game like this. They need that. They hand it up the middle. There he is. There's a dive right over the tackle. He moves the pile. I bet he gets like a, a gain of about four. On that. You have second down for the Colonels as they're into their, to the Gardendale territory. They line up, you have Deuces on both sides set out. There's the snap. It's, he oh. fakes it. He's going deep. He's going in there. there He's, got him. He's got him. They what score. A touchdown. Score. Number 24. It's Dimitri. Is it Dimitri Young? All right. Good job on that one. Good got a job light on show. that. Here comes the light show. So they'll do that. There you go. Stick with it. Stick with <laughs> it. At eight minutes left in the fourth quarter 59 to 18 we'll see are they going to go for the extra are they going to go for the two why not just go for it just go for it why not just go for it as the clock continues to run 740 in the fourth quarter yeah, penalty on Woodlawn. 
Uh, did you see what the call I was? Did not. They're walking the ball off. Unsportsmanlike. Unsportsman -like. Now you've got the offense out there. Uh, yeah, you're gonna go for two. Why not? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Why not? Let's Why not? see. Let's see what we have. Woodlawn sets up, ready to take the snap. Here you go. There it is. Outside, he's under pressure. He rolls out to his right. He gets around the corner. He's he got goes some up. green. He get in there. He fakes him. He gets. He, he gets, gets in. in. <laughs> what a play. He gets the two. <laughs> nice job. Nice job. Woodlawn, 20. Gardendale, 59. In the fourth quarter with six minutes left in the fourth quarter. What a play. What a conversion. Nice job. Take a look at this. He takes a snap. He gets under pressure. He fakes it. Oh, that's the previous the quarterback into the, into the corner. Nice throw. Nice throw. They execute. I'd like how he put that, you know, puts a little bit of that dance move on. I mean, you know, we don't need that right now. <laughs> <laughs> he did kind of do it half-hearted. Yeah, 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 he, he like, just did it. He just did it. He didn't put a lot of oomph into it. No, he it. did not. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a fantastic uh, two-point two point conversion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Woodlawn gets out to get ready to kick it off to Gardell. As they set it up and they get the ball ready to play. It is five minutes and 25 seconds left as the 59 to 20 as the Gardendale uh, Rockets over the Woodlawn Colonels, 20 to 59 onside kick. Onside kick. It's bobbled. He falls on it. Gardendale falls on it quickly. So Gardendale recovers and will take over right at the 47 yard line of Gardendale. First and 10. The offense. They seem to be strolling out a little bit now as opposed oh. to running out, <laughs> get running out there. But you have the, uh, they pulled their starters. Maybe slowing it down just a little bit. The little dial back. There's a snap, the handoff up the middle, Gardendale. He runs up there, he gets a gain. About nine yards or so. Of about nine yards, second down. It is second down with four minutes and 30 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Gardendell gets back to the line quickly, ready to snap. They take the ball. Quarterback sneak up the middle. He is met immediately at the line. Was it enough for a first down? I don't believe the officials have not moved it. I think it is now third down. Third down. I'll take that back. They were, I don't know if they slowed down a little bit. They were going on that one. Third down with three minutes and 58 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Handoff up the middle. He is tapped for a first down for Gardendale as the clock continues to roll. It is first down, Gardendale. And again, I guess whoever's in there, that's just how they do. They just rush yeah, to they, the they, line they, and they're they, going. That's their thing. I guess they say until you stop us, we're going to keep doing it. it. Yeah. Up the middle again off tackle. He's tackled up there for a gain of about seven yards as the clock continues to run. Three minutes and 20 seconds left in the fourth. Well, you know, Woodlawn did their best tonight. You know, they still showed sparks of takes it off tackle. Ooh, he's hit hard on that outside tackle by Woodlawn. The quarterback was on the keeper. He gets outside and he smacked. Oh, yeah, he, he so took a hit. Woodlawn still has a lot of game in them. Their defense, they're still flying around. Woodlawn comes to the line. Two minutes and 49 seconds left in the fourth. Woodlawn gets it. 
gets the call, lines up. There's your snap, quarterback's keeper again. He's up the middle. He Oof. is stopped for a first down. For a first down, we have a Woodlawn player down. We have a Woodlawn player down. Uh, like he's grabbing his knee. Hope it's not his. Hope he comes out of there okay. All right, during this right here, while we take this injury timeout, we're going to take it down to the truck. Coach Clarence Smith III, head coach, Woodline High School, and you're watching BCS Under the Lights. Success starts in Birmingham City Schools. Teachers, preachers, professors, college presidents, CEOs, chefs, and welders, business owners too. They all get their start in Birmingham City Schools. BCS offers an engaging curriculum in all grades, pre-kindergarten to prepare our children for the future, award-winning academies, and career technical programs. Middle schools focused on career paths and early college for scholars who want to get ahead. Go to bmcityschools.org. Begin your road to success in BCS today. All right, we are back live. He gets up. Good thing that the Woodlawn player is up, walking off under his own power. That's a good thing to see. You never want to see anybody get injured. You're going to get bangs and bruises in this game, but you don't want to see anybody really get hit. Gardner, Gardendale up to the line. They give it up the middle. He's hit again. They stop him it for about a gain of about seven with two minutes coming up on two minutes left in the fourth quarter. Second it, down. It is going to be second down for the Rockets. <clears throat> Rockets line up. Quarterback keeper right up the middle. He's tackled, brought down as the clock continues to run with a minute 50 on the clock in the fourth quarter. Just a little short. Just a little short of the first down. <laughs> Well, I tell you, this has been uh, something Gardendale executed tonight. Woodlawn hung in there. They tried to show a little fight. They put 20 points up this evening. Snap to Gardendale. Hand off up the middle. As they hold him there, I think that's going to probably do it. As they yeah. move the chains, first down for Gardendale. As the clock continues to run, we're coming up on one minute in the fourth quarter. It is going to be first down for Gardendale. How much confusion can you be illegal? Come on now. <laughs> 58 seconds left in the fourth. Now, you know, this has been a, a game Gardendale clearly uh, had their, executed what they wanted to do. You had Woodlawn at some points that were able to do what they wanted to do. What do you think? And Gardendale, they came out to play. I mean, they they, they won. I mean, they just started winning at the, the midpoint of the season. So this will be their third win of the season. So. Yep. You're looking at a team that's probably turning it on at the right time. Hopefully we thought Woodlawn could turn it on at the right time too, but Gardendale is that team that's doing it, and they're doing it big. You see the the last two games they play, they put up some points on people. And it's probably because of that hurry-up offense and people not being able to stop it. But, I mean, they came to play, and it, it looks like they executed on every, every side of the ball. And they did. They did. Clock runs 25 seconds left in the fourth. Gardell runs their offense off tackle. He is met and tap brought down. Oh, is he? No, he's brought down oh. and scored. Oh. Looks like there's a flag on the play. Maybe coming back. Holding. Offense. That will definitely come back. That is coming back. 
Offensive hold. That will be it. That's going to wrap it up for us. And that is it. 59 to 20 will be the final score of Gardell Rockets over the Woodlawn Colonels. Here is a final. Unfortunately, the Woodlawn Colonels just could not get it popping. Get that? See what I did with that? <laughs> <laughs> But, as you know, at the end of the night, you can see that this is, you know, sportsmanship that we like to display here at the BCS and always talk about. They did their best, you know, even at the end of the game. You saw the defense for uh, Woodlawn really try to step up. And the defense stepped up, and then the offense, too. The offense didn't give up. They, they, they put up a touchdown at the end of the game and even a long two-point conversion. So... Their heads were still in the game, no matter what the score was. They didn't give up on themselves. They still came out. They still did what they had to do. It's just Gordon Dill was probably a little too much for them today. Well, what do you have to say? What do you just, just to analyze for the rest of it? Do you, what do you see? Do you see bright spots for Woodlawn? Oh, yeah, most definitely. That run game is there. The run game is there. The defense is there. The pieces are there. Like you said, these guys are still young. I mean, they just got to work through some things. I mean, it's, it's, it's maybe this is a rebuild for them. And you're trying to get that staff right, and maybe you, you're just rebuilding for next year. But it's some things that can be worked on. It's some things that they can build on from this, this loss. But I would not count this team out next year. Oh, no doubt. Oh, no doubt. Too young. Too young. Well, we want to say thank you to everyone at the end of the game tonight. It is the end of the game. Uh, we'd like to say hello to some of our end of the game sponsors who have make this thing, you know, uh, brings it to life for us. So we'd like to also talk to you about the strategic plan survey. Help shape your path forward for the next five years. Scan and take the survey so that they can get your input on how to improve the Birmingham school system and your thoughts. We want the parents to get involved, the people to get involved. This Lexia Awareness Month. You got Dixia Awareness Month? Be aware. Be ready to unlock more information. Simply scan the QR code. Now, on to the national. In October is National Principals Appreciation Month. We are proud of the leaders of our BCS schools like our guy Steve Brown. Well, yeah. He does a fantastic job. He does a great job. And we like to thank you and get you ready now. Get your money ready. Get your cash apps, all that kind of stuff ready. <laughs> we got the Birmingham City Schools Magic City Marching Band Festival. The Magic City Band Marching Festival is October 22nd. And you're going to be at 2 p.m. at the G.W. Carver High School. You can go ahead and get that on GoFan.co. It's 10 bucks. Just 10 bucks. Come see these bands. I think I've heard like Alabama State's band oh, yeah. is going to be there. I don't know why they don't have Gremlins band. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. But anyway, <laughs> next week, you got the BCS Thursday night game of the week. October the 26th, you've got the Parker the Thundering Herd against the Huffman Vikings. And that will be our BCS Thursday night under the lights. Under the lights. There we go. And now it is also the Hardwoods. Courtside High School Basketball Hoops edition of the BCS Under the Lights. We're going to do, I'm going to do my, my, my seventh, my eighth, my ninth grade voice. Yes, are you going to put us on? Yes, we're going to put you on. Yes. And we got our, you can also be a big sponsor for BCS Under the Lights. Be a part of this. Your business can be a sponsor as we showcase our student athletes. Sponsorship segments are available and to be featured or for more information, you can contact Nikki Seaborn today at C Seaborn, whatever, they got me off of there. <laughs> Alex, and you got the ATF, Federation of Teachers, who are doing their thing. They're, they're helping out teachers. And we also got to say thank you to our guy, James W. Brown at AFLAC, 205-945-1130. And to our official sponsor for halftime is the AEA, Alabama Education Association. We would like to thank all of our sponsors. Thank you for
for what you do to help make this come to light every week. We now, you also have our scholar, we got to remember our guys, our scholarship athletes of the week, the TC Traditions Chicken Scholar Athlete of the Week, Mikhail Young and, I mean, Jackson and Demetri Young, and these guys are 3.9s, are Scholar Athletes of the Week. Fantastic. TC Traditions Chicken Scholar Athletes of the Week, they are the sponsor. That chicken is some really, really good <laughs> stuff. So, we have to say thank you tonight for tuning in with us. I am Brett Oates with my man. Michael Torn. There you go. <laughs> I'm not if you remember the name. Thanks to all the guys down in the truck who do a fantastic job, all the technical people with the cameras, with the graphics every week. We have great stories that they feature every week here. We just like to thank everybody for what they do. We have a great time. Uh, if you think we're Absolutely. having fun, we are having fun here. These guys make it so simple. They uh, need more money. See, I gave a pitch right there. <laughs> Give them more money over there. Those guys do a fantastic job. So, <laughs> this guy just chucked in. Thank you. Pay them. So, <laughs> you got to pay them. So, they do a great job. Now, for next week, remember that we got BCS under the lights. You got Huffman and you got Parker High School for BCS under the lights. So, for BCS under the lights, I am Brett Oates and our Michael Tart. There you go. <laughs> I'd like you to say your own name. There you go. Get it out there. We'd like to thank you and good night.